Sense and the Taliban proposal to include Bergdahl to sweeten the deal, initially suggested a year ago, has only now finally been accepted by the U.S., which Hegel attributed to Bergdahl's failing health. Hegel says the timing was right on the deal, and it might also give a boost to trying to get the talks themselves restarted, though given how many times those talks have fallen apart for seemingly nothing, it seems like a long shot for any deal to come. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Hi, I'm Clint Webb, and I'm running for Senate. I have a short cropped haircut, a pretty enough yet accessible looking wife, and a newborn baby that I've dressed in a suit to prove to you that I mean business. For the last 15 years, I've lived my life in such a bland, uncontroversial, and repressed manner that it's almost unnatural. Why? Because I've been preparing to be your representative since I was a child. Most well-adjusted sane men would be hesitant to take a job where their decisions would so drastically affect the lives of so many. But not me. I possess a sort of sociopathic narcissism that makes me think that I should be in charge of everyone. But all of that needs to start here at home, in this beautiful state that I've grown to love since I moved here 18 months ago. Together, we can piggyback some of our state's legitimate needs onto my unquenchable lust for self-glorification. And that's a promise. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything that you want. Just dial on in toll free here at 855-450 free. That's 855 855- 450-3733. You can join us online at freetalklive.com. Enjoy the features that we share with you on the site. We will have a special guest host joining us later on in the program. Some of you who have listened to the show for a long time will remember this voice. The uh, Again, the toll-free number, 855-450-FREE, and the music that's going on a little long, which can sometimes mean... That we're not on the air. We're not actually on the radio. Now, if you're listening to us online, you know that you can hear us. So we've got other things to talk about here tonight, all kinds of interesting discussions. (laughs) The Keen Spiritual Retreat is back in the news. Mark, what is the Keen Spiritual Retreat? Well, that's uh, this uh, multi-million dollar jail that they built a few years ago here in uh, Cheshire County. Um, It's the Cheshire County Spiritual Retreat because... uh, the people of Cheshire County, not just the city of Keene, many of the other towns uh, have to pay for this thing. And, um, you know, state-of-the-art new prison uh, situation. Jail. Yes, the Keene Spiritual Retreat. One of the reasons we use uh, that term for it is uh, was actually coined by Sam Dodson, who was previously a host on this show. He spent 58 days in the, at the, at the time it was in a different place, uh, in a different town. It's now located in Keene, where we're doing the show. It was in a, a nearby town previously. And when he stayed in there, he termed it that after the fact. And I, it's it's kind of stuck. Uh, there's even a Facebook page for Keene Spiritual Retreat listed as a bed and, uh, bed and breakfast. You can certainly uh, choose the, to make your time in jail a spiritual uh, event. And it would seem like the... You know, the, the folks that do the civil disobedience here in Keene likely are tr- liable to try that. So I like this story. Uh, every now and then the, the head, the, the man in charge of the jail, uh, the superintendent, Rick Van Wickler, manages to stir up some press. He's uh, been with law enforcement against prohibition in the past, and apparently he no longer is with law enforcement against prohibition. That's some of the information that's revealed in this article over at vice.com. But for a number of years, he was one of the speakers for LEAP. And LEAP is an organization that is mostly retired cops, although there are some, a very few who are still active duty. Rick is not a retired cop. He's active with the Department of Corrections. He's a warden, yeah. And uh, so I don't know what what happened between him and Leap. If I find out, I'll certainly let you know. Um, I did post the story over at freekeen.com, so if you want to link over to the full Vice piece, well, you can find it there right now. Later, we'll put it on our Facebook, and you can dig in and see some of the pictures here. But the the piece is great because it talks about how uh, Rick is, is kind of a different jail warden. and he's somebody who approaches running uh, in this institution, which is not a place most people want to spend any time. Nope. Uh, in in a way that is more humane than others. 
Now, does that mean that there aren't people in the jail who are in solitary confinement? No. In fact, he addresses solitary in the in the piece. Does that mean that some of the policies aren't questionable at the jail? That you know maybe they aren't as uh, as nice as some people might want them to be? Uh, yeah. I mean. Th- Everybody's going to find something to disagree with with the way a jail is run. But on the scale of jails, Cheshire County's jail is it's a cut above, in my opinion. And that's me having stayed in the jail for a period of 58 days myself. I, having paid for stint. it, uh, really not that thrilled. Well, you're paying about average, according to Van Wickler here, as far as what jails cost. Anyway, in the other jails you've been in, began Warden Rick Van Wickler, do you remember the inmates yelling and screaming and banging? I nodded. This is the author here who is uh, named Rock Marin. Uh, I nodded, scanning the faces of the men in D block, gack, uh, gawking at us from the narrow glass windows of their cells, eyes wide, mouths slack. You asked how we measure success? This is one way we measure success. Everyone's looking at us, and no one is making a sound. They're looking, and they want to yell right now. It's right there in their throats. The warden balled up his fist, tucking it under his chin. And as much as they want to yell and bang and scream, they won't, because it's unacceptable behavior that will result in an undesirable action. The warden spoke slowly and deliberately, like a man indifferent to time. The 54-year-old runs New Hampshire's 230-bed Cheshire County Correctional Facility. I spent a day with Van Wickler earlier this month to see how one of the nation's most modern and progressive jails operate. Aware of critics who see facilities like his as being too comfortable for inmates, the warden took special care to emphasize the unpleasant aspects of incarceration here. Van Wickler believes that punishment is his primary duty, but that it can be administered in a manner that encourages rehabilitation, lowers costs, and vastly reduces the number of Americans behind bars. So punishment isn't on the list of uh, at least Florida Department Corrections uh, goals. It's custody, care, and control. That he addresses that later, actually. Yeah, it's the, I mean, the article's, uh, the author's word, punishment, yeah, not Van Wickler. Right. They're, you're put in jail for punishment, but once you're there, it's their job to you know keep you in custody, care for your basic needs or whatever, and uh, keep you under control. And I... Uh, you know, having spent some time in prison and certainly looking at uh, the criminal justice system from that standpoint and from as, as an outsider, as taxpayer, I, um, I I understand. A lot of people want to send people to jail and just make the time as unpleasant as possible. Mm-hmm. But, you know, w- rather than take away TVs, wouldn't it be better if we had educational programming? Really, think about it for a second. Wouldn't it be better if we gave these people educational programming of some sort? They want to watch TV. You know how people are with TV. You turn it on, they look at it. Um, Do you want a bunch of unhappy people in in prison so that they fight each other? Wait a second. Don't forget when they're fighting that people have to tear them apart and those people are guards. And you have to pay for the hospitalization and the the insurance and all the, the disability of the guards. And believe me, once a state employee gets an opportunity for a disability, they milk it. Um, so, it's true. Y- you know, just the, the let's punish them attitude is not a conservative attitude. It is a fiscally irresponsible attitude. People who believe that haven't checked themselves as far as what they believe. They think that you can take a bad person, put them in a bad place, treat them badly, and then release them on society and they'll act good. That is not only fiscally irresponsible, it's dumb. So the warden, again, emphasized some of the uh, the difficulties there. He says it wasn't always this way, Van Wickler recalled, gesturing around him. In 1993, he had inherited an institution mired in corruption. Now, I didn't know the story of the previous warden. This is pretty shocking. The previous warden, prior to Van Wickler, had operated a side business selling stolen firearms to some of the same criminals that flowed in and out of his facility. When an official came to inform the warden that he was under investigation, the warden pulled out a handgun and unloaded it into the official's chest before turning the gun on himself. Well, that solved that problem, didn't it? The warden had preferred death to the prospect of ending up in one of his own cells. Van Wickler stated that uh, those were horrifying days because there were no standards to jail conditions, said of his experience as an entry-level corrections officer back in 1987. He said the unprofessionalism was just unfathomable. Looking back, I don't know how I stayed. 
We were at another building at the time, he continued. It was very overcrowded, scorching hot in the summer and freezing in the winter. There was literally ice on the inside of the walls. Can you imagine that? Yes. I mean, you were imprisoned in Florida. I don't imagine that uh, you know ice was ever an issue, although certainly there, it's, it's, it's been heard that uh, even jails in Florida like to you know, turn down the AC as low as it can possibly go. Yeah, well, but freeze um, people out. You know, I mean, they tend to offer different sorts of clothing to uh, different, peop- different prisoners in different areas. When I took over as warden, I immediately petitioned for the money to build another facility. It took 13 years to get it, but in retrospect, those 13 years were a gift. During that time, I toured a lot of jails all around the country, asking the question, if you were to build this place again all over, or build this place all over again, what would you do differently? And that was a big advantage. I took the best of what each one had to offer. What were some of those ideas, I asked. Well, the first thing, as I'm sure you've noticed, is there's no perimeter fence. Right. I was lost for a couple of minutes this morning trying to find the place, the author admits. I was looking for barbed wire. Well, that's the idea, said Van Wickler. Con- con- uh, Constantine wire. Nobody wants a jail in their neighborhood, and we didn't want to make it obvious. Most people don't even know it's a jail. They think it's a school. <laughs> that's kind of a funny uh, backward statement because it certainly seems like a lot of schools look like jails in the way they're designed. We'll come back with more from Vice.com on a warden who, well, as the article puts it in the headline, this warden wants to make his job obsolete. That's a bit of an exaggeration, but it is an interesting perspective on running a jail a little bit differently. You can share your thoughts here on Free Talk Live. Are you a programmer? Are you proud of your programming skills? If you can program, then you can prove theorems. And if you can prove theorems, then you can get proof that you can prove theorems at mathgate.info. Are you looking to employ a programmer? Before hiring an applicant, you can verify their skills by asking them to pass a test in basic formal reasoning at mathgate.info. All of this can be done using only Bitcoin addresses as pseudonyms. Welcome to the future. For more information, visit mathgate.info. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent Torrent link and learn how Torrent Fiends archives. Gold, it's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the reemergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-223. For the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As good as gold can be yours by calling 800 686 2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800 686 2237. If you are like most people, chances are you're malnourished. Most people do not get the 90 essential nutrients the body needs to survive. This lack of nutrition can lead to all sorts of health issues. If you don't feel as good as you'd like, or if you're looking to get a jump start on a new, healthier you, Longevity has your answer. With the Healthy Start Pack, you get all the nutrients your body needs. With all 90 essential nutrients and 115 fruits and vegetables, you get a supplement system that is antioxidant rich and beyond compare. The Healthy Start Pack includes products backed by 40 years of science and millions of dollars in research, like Beyond Tangy Tangerine, EFA Plus 90, and OsteoFX Plus. To order your Healthy Start Pack today, call 607-739-5595. Again, that number is 607-739-5595. Once you start taking the Healthy Start Pack, you will see and feel why our motto is 90 for life. 
Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. Take control toll-free here and bring up anything you want. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype. You can Skype in at username lrn.fm. We're talking about the Keen Spiritual Retreat. It's making national news again, uh, this time through vice.com. And we'll tell you some more about what makes it different than a lot of jails here in a little bit. Uh, And it's really, it has to do with the man running the operation. That's Rick Van Wickler, former member of law enforcement against prohibition. The vast majority of home loans um, in the United States are backed by the federal government. Uh, They've got you know, this Fannie Mae, the Freddie Mac, they're, they're involved. And I think we know the problems that they've created throughout the years with their involvement. And recently, private sellers have been getting into the home uh, loan business with the intention of competing against the federal government and offering people better service. Uh, Roger Schlesinger, he's the Mortgage Minute guy. You've probably heard about him if you've been listening to talk radio for any length of time. He's got some uh, the ability to work with these guys that are they're offering these home loans. So, if you remember the old stated income loans, you can get those again. Roger has a uh, has a line on being able to get you stated income loans. All you have to do state your income, obviously truthfully, and then they can get you a loan. And rates right now they're great, and it's never been easier to get a loan. If you need to refinance or for whatever reason get cash out of your home, you can do it. Call the Mortgage Minute guy at 1-866-288-0088. Again, it's Mortgage Minute Guy uh, at MortgageMinuteGuy.com. The number is 866-288-0088, MortgageMinuteGuy.com. We continue with more on the, as I like to call it, the Keene Spiritual Retreat. It is the county jail here in Cheshire County, New Hampshire. It's something that I've listed for a long time on the 150 reasons to move to Keene. For those of you who you know are new to the show, Free Talk Live is uh, is part of the Free State Project. I mean, the, the show itself isn't, but we're actually partnered with the with the Free State Project. There's a new kind of mission partners program going on, and uh, the, one of the reasons to move to Keene, you know, Keene is one of the many areas that you can you can choose to move to in New Hampshire as Come part of the Free Keen, State go Project. To jail. The idea of the Free State Project, of course, to bring liberty-loving people here to New Hampshire and get active for liberty. Fact is, the facts are the facts, Mark. If you're an activist, there's a chance you're going to be targeted. And it doesn't matter if you're a politician. There's a good chance you could be targeted for politics reasons as well. I mean, remember when uh, when we had first moved here, Julia, who moved here with us at the time, former co-host of the show, she ran for political office. Very, you know, up-and-up kind of political campaign she did offer to give her paychecks to uh, a voter. Right. She didn't know that she was. She wanted you know, to give. She didn't want to take the uh, the government money, the, and uh, she wanted to give it away in sort of a lotto style. How else would you give it away? And the attorney general's office threatened her with felony charges over that. Uh, but regardless, you know, there's always that chance, right? There's always a chance that if you're threatening the the status quo, somebody in that status quo is going to decide to target you for some sort of retaliation. So if you're going to have to go to jail. It might as well be a better jail. I mean, if you're going to choose between the worst jail in in the state, one of the probably one of the worst in the Northeast, from what I've heard, uh, the Manchester Jail in that Valley Street, versus one of the best jails that exists in the United States. 
seems like a no-brainer to me. So if you're going to do civil disobedience, Keene's the place to do it, in my opinion. Anywhere in Cheshire County would be a safe place to do civil disobedience compared to, uh, say, the Manchester area. Most so anyway. of the things you'd do civil disobediently um, in Cheshire County outside of Keene would be done in the woods. I don't know what that means. Most of Cheshire County is the oh, woods. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But my point being, this is, you know, be, be choosy about if you're going to do disobedience, if you expect there's a chance that jail may result from your activism, here's an option for you. So uh, more with the warden of the jail, that's Rick Van Wickler, former member of law enforcement against prohibition. And he's still very much against prohibition. I'd like to make that clear. And he does make that clear here in a little bit. So they're talking about some of the differences between his jail and other jails. He observed a number of them as he was, you know, the warden of the old jail before this new one was built. And he, you know, kind of picked and choose, uh, chose what he liked about those other jails. So the question was, you know, why don't you have a lack of, or why don't you have a fence? Does the lack of a fence impact your security? And Van Wickler says that's the problem with corrections today. They say we need more fences, we need more cameras, we need more sensors. Well, if you just effing stay awake and do your job, you don't need any of that. They'll say we need a fence to catch escapees. Well, how about you don't let them escape in the first place? But here's the primary reason that I don't want a perimeter fence. Children come here to visit mom or dad. It's scary enough for adults to go through concertina wire. Imagine a four-year-old. And you've never had any escapes here, says the author? Never. Van Wickler ushered us into the sun... And by the way, it wouldn't be hard. Uh, I mean, I was on the, the food crew at the kitchen. There's one time every day where they let you out of the kitchen to go take the garbage out, and there's one guard standing there keeping watch. He doesn't have a gun on his hip. If you really, really wanted to get out of a jail, which, of course, you're not you're not staying in jail longer than a year, you could just book it down the hill at right. that point. Well, I mean, that's that's really the point is, is that they know the chances that they're taking. Generally, they can generalize with the chances they take. Right. And because very, it's very a low. new institution, they don't have to worry quite as much about, um, you know, sort of the, uh, the momentum of uh, mistakes that have been made in the past. So, yeah, you let somebody who's got six months left on their sentence and there's there's jail there's prisons in america that don't have fences too they just have lines where you're not supposed minimum to walk security across. yeah minimum security stuff and that's essentially what you're talking about a guy has uh, six months left to go on a sentence many most of them you're not gonna be able to push them out you wouldn't you know if if you tried to drag right. them out they'd bite <laughs> they your fight hand you back. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so, yeah. because they don't want and then to, you get a bail jumping charge or an escape charge right. or whatever they don't want that trouble they do not want that trouble now yeah. that what they're not doing is they're not taking rapists facing 10 years or murderers those guys are on the kitchen crew they're yeah. Yeah, they're not getting anywhere and they're not going anywhere right. there are very few escapes in this country some abscondings and that's a different story so van wickler ushered us into the sun-drenched lobby of the ninety-four thousand square foot institution it looked like the waiting room of a doctor's office and that the warden explained is exactly the point Good afternoon, Becky, Van Wickler called out to the smiling woman behind the front desk. Hello, Becky chimed in with all the sweetness of a kindergarten teacher. As you can see, the warden... The, by the way, when I've gone there, they've been very nice. As you can see, the warden continued, we post... Most of the times I've gone there is to visit you, by the way. <laughs> we post some of the art and projects that the inmates do. The women just made these flowers in a recent craft shop. Inmates who never knew they could draw are now discovering new talent. As a testament to the unintimidating environment, the artwork is regularly stolen by guests coming to visit prisoners. They're under video surveillance, so we know who takes the stuff. We go talk to them, and they always give it back. We entered the secure zone almost imperceptibly. I was never searched in any way. As we strolled through the labyrinthine corridors of the jail, operators inside what is jokingly known as the secret squirrel room followed our progress via closed-circuit television. Solid steel doors buzzed open one by one as we advanced, the bolts slamming home behind us. It was as if we were made out of vapor, some ephemeral material that allowed us to drift effortlessly through walls that held back the dense bodies of the prisoners. I felt it the whole time we were there. They were heavy, we were light. It's weird. Make yourself <laughs> at home. Working on his literature career? <laughs> I was told, well, I mean, they hire good writers here at uh, advice.com. They'll uh, give you more information here. The, uh, the prisoner, they're actually he's going to meet some prisoners here in a moment, have a chat with them. And there was some th some news that was shocking even to me about this jail, something I didn't know about. I'll uh, reveal that here in moments with the Vice.com piece on the Keene Spiritual Retreat, as some of us like to call it, a.k.a. the county jail. It's a bit of a different facility than what you might have experienced if you've ever been inside one of these things. It's Free Talk Live. 
Gentlemen, in search of a million dollar smile that'll make them take notice, I mean really get their attention, then get the mud. My Magic Mud. The fluoride free whitener with no chemicals, additives, GMOs, or bad taste. And safe to swallow. My Magic Mud detoxifies, reduces sensitivity, cleans and strengthens your teeth while it whitens. Comes as a powder for pure whitening power. Start looking good for that special someone. Get the mud now. MyMagicMud.com It's already too late. Criminals have kicked in your door and are now in your home. Before this happens, homeowners have a choice. One, do nothing and hope you aren't one of the 1.4 million families attacked each year. Or two, refuse to be a victim and for as low as $59, reinforce your doors with door devils. Door devils simply attach to existing door frames and have proven to stop the biggest bad guys from kicking in doors. Read our police testimonials of real-life events at doordevil.com. Alarms don't stop kick-ins. We do. Doordevil.com. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com. The monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nesquik. Try Nesquik 4-Packs, perfect for lunches and great for kids on the go. Look for it in the juice aisle. Snack time is a great chance to sneak extra calcium into your child's diet without making him feel like he's eating something he doesn't want. Serve up dairy-rich foods like smoothies, flavored milk, frozen yogurt, and string cheese. He'll love the treat, and you'll love knowing how good it is for him. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp dot freetalklive.com listen to lrn.fm on any phone anytime 213-493-0309 that's Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything that you want. Just dial on in toll-free here. Coming up still tonight, seasteading. It's back in the news. And Mark's always been a big fan of the seasteading thing, so we'll dig into that. And if you don't know what seasteading is, you'll find out. Uh, So you can take control here toll-free. 855-450 free. Free Talk Live's toll-free lines are brought to you by ProXPN. If you care about online privacy, you need to know about ProXPN. It is a global virtual private network. Private, meaning 
encryption is involved, meaning they're encrypting everything you do. Right now, if you're just using your regular old internet connection on your cell phone or your laptop or your desktop, there's not encryption. So your internet service provider is probably logging every website you visit, every search term you enter. They may be keeping those logs for up to five years in some cases. You can stop that logging from occurring right now by going to proxpn.com slash FTL and downloading ProXPN software. It's available for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, and Android devices. Whatever device you're using, ProXPN is available. Now, it's different for Linux. There's a different setup. Just email their support department. They'll help you out with that, but it's not complicated for Linux folks. Anyway, whatever you're using, you can hook up with ProXPN, and they will encrypt your internet connection, meaning that your ISP is clueless about what you're doing online. That's valuable. But you can get this level of protection, and also it protects you from other people that might be snooping, say, on your Wi-Fi connection, or if you're at a coffee shop, you know, their system administrator can't look at what you're doing either. So there's protection involved, and it's only 5 bucks a month when you use the premium account, or when you sign up for the premium account for a year-long plan, and you use our discount code FTL20. You also get multiple uh, locations, multiple servers around the world to which you can connect. There's unlimited bandwidth for those with premium accounts. And if you have a premium account, you can also privately torrent and get past regionally blocked websites. Very useful stuff. ProXPN.com slash FTL. Code FTL20, you get a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. There's nothing to lose except your privacy. So take the steps necessary to protect it. ProXPN.com slash FTL. Code FTL20 for ProXPN. All right, so we're talking about Rick Van Wickler. He is the head of the uh, the operator of the local county jail here in Cheshire County, New Warden. Hampshire. It's true. that Well, he uses the term superintendent, uh, not warden. But... He's a really what interesting do you think character. about changing those names and stuff like that? What do you mean, what do I think about it? What do you think about it? I mean... I think he can call himself whatever he wants to call himself. I could call, call myself Big Daddy Rhino Schwantz. It doesn't make me... Um, well, Warden may have a more or a less positive kind of connotation with people, perhaps. So you should change your name in order to just run away from the... You know, change the, the name of your title in order to run away from the history that uh, people that have run prisons and jails have? Well, why not? exactly the the exactly the reason why you shouldn't do it you because it's it's lying essentially it's running away from what it is i would say well, they i may not i declare may... proudly that i am the best most humane warden in america hmm. like i would own it i don't know if That's it was his I choice said. it might have been the, the term i just uh, I'm, given and to I'm, not claiming, the county I'm not claiming that he he does it or the county. i don't care who had made the decision i think it's running away from things and I've thought about, the, you know, I've had plenty of time to think about it, and that's what my thought, thought I process is. I don't know how much of an active choice it was of his. It doesn't matter whether it was his choice. I'm not talking about it being his choice. I'm saying that well, then people, why, wait, people wait, wait. shouldn't mess with the language. Well, that's what it is. It's a, He's a warden. You're saying it's running away from things. If it was a position that he went for that was called not warden but superintendent, then he's not running. Then the county commissioners Why are. would the county commissioners be running it? The guy that used to run the jail was uh, terrible. Apparently. So I don't think it was any kind of conscious decision. Okay. Here's like, my oh, opinion. We don't want our people to be seen as a warden. This the last guy apparently shot someone to death. People all across America doing all kinds of different jobs shouldn't go changing their titles just to This is New Hampshire. They've got different words sometimes for things up here. Superintendent isn't a new word. You can believe that there's uh, there, there okay. were people that in the past that ran uh, correctional facilities in New Hampshire that called themselves wardens. All right. Well, anyway, I think this is a minor a quibble at best. It is a quibble. Moving on. Vice.com did a piece on this jail and the operator, uh, the superintendent, a.k.a. the warden, Rick Van Wickler. He's, uh, he's an interesting character. You know, I can't say he's a friend of mine, but we've always been friendly. I, I enjoy my conversations with him. While I was in his facility, he stopped by and we had a chat a couple times. And I know, consider him okay to be guy. largely fair. Yeah, he's an okay guy, and I think he really does bring a level of humanity to this, what is a very inhumane system in general. So he said to the reporter, he's talking, you know, they're in the facility at this point, and they're in like the secret room where they do the, uh, the monitoring of the prisoners. There's a bunch of video screens and things like that. Make yourself at home, I was told without irony. You can photograph anything you like. That unprecedented access was only possible because of New Hampshire's autonomous correctional system. Unlike most jails across the country, this facility is funded at the county level. The warden's word is law here. We receive no funding from the state, and so the state 
has no oversight. Interesting. Says Van Wickler. He says the policies and procedures are developed by me. We don't have the bureaucracy of going all the way up the chain. That makes us very efficient. Now, again, that's efficient compared to other government <laughs> jails. I'm sure there are some inefficiencies that one could find when one looks at the jail budget. First among the jail's policies is its human relations focus. Van Wickler says, I think what we do better here than most places is we set limits and we enforce those limits, not only for the inmates, but for our employees. The mission of corrections, and this goes back to what you were saying earlier, Mark, according to the American Correctional Association is care, custody, and control. We believe it to be care, custody, and management. Rule one for my corrections officers is you are not in control of anything. You do not control anybody. Yeah, I agree with that. I, I like the the nuance that he's uh, that he's bringing to this is because honestly, you're one person in a room of depending on how the you situation. You haven't read this yet, have you? No. Okay, because <laughs> he's gonna make that point. Okay, coming up. <laughs> well, but but you like you get it. I used to yeah. be. Um, I used to work with the administration of a prison. I've had these conversations yeah. in the past, and they would bounce, literally bounce ideas off of me at times. Mm. Um, and I, you know, so I I get it. The the fact is, you're in a room with thirty or forty dudes. Uh, you're not managed. You're not controlling anything. So do not try. He's talking about don't try to control anyone. As an employee. Rule number two, you can manage everything. Let's face it, we're outnumbered. It's 64 to 1 in most cases. The only way that you can successfully run a jail is with the offender's cooperation. If they want to overrun you, they will overrun you. It would seem that the best thing to do is to gain voluntary compliance. The question is, how do you do that? The women's block constituted an open area of tables surrounded by tiered cells. A single corrections officer sat unprotected behind a computer console near the entrance. The warden discussed the advantages of that configuration. He said in the old way of doing things called linear intermittent, the inmates were always behind bars or doors. You'd move them using correctional staff. You'd move them to eat, you'd move them to programming, and you'd move them back. The problem they was... Do that, yes. All that movement created flashpoints where assaults would happen. The design of this correctional facilities is this facility is direct supervision, meaning that the correctional officers are with the inmates 24/7. Now he continued with linear intermittent. I'd like to point out um, I was a situation in the Manatee County Jail, and they would what they do is they'd there were four. Is this cell when blocks. you were waiting to go to trial or whatever? Waiting, uh, waiting to go to, pr some, to prison. Somewhere, yeah, waiting to go to trial, waiting to go to prison. Okay. Um, and there was a situation where somebody was a co-defendant of somebody else. They'd keep them in different blocks, but they'd feed in the same dining hall. So they'd do this, which, you, you know, they'd bring mm. guards. Okay, guys, walk down this way. And they'd line you up and you walk down that way and th that kind of thing. Big waste of guards time, by the way. Yeah. But um, one dude saw another dude that he really had a problem with and he jumped on him in the dining hall. And this is back when they didn't, you know, they didn't have plastic trays. They had these metal trays like hubcaps. Split, oh, wow. split, the, dude's, split the dude's face right open, um, head right open, uh, above his above his face. So, yeah, I mean, you know, if you want to do something quick, you can do it. He's right. All right, so we'll meet some of the inmates here in a little bit. And a very unique, very interesting inmate, one I was shocked to hear was in the facility. We'll share that with you here, and you can share your thoughts. Any experiences you've had in jail, you're certainly welcome to get on the line here at 855-450 free. Do you think Van Wickler, the superintendent, is going in the wrong direction? Should he be cracking down on these guys rather than acting humanely towards them? This is Free Talk Live. Would you like to meet like-minded people from all over and have a spectacular vacation while sharing ideas about liberty, free markets, and individual rights? If so, Cato University is for you. Cato University is the Cato Institute's premier educational event. Cato University brings together outstanding faculty and participants from across the globe, all sharing a commitment to liberty and learning. Cato University's widening popularity is due not only to the quality of the attendees, faculty, and topics, but to the opportunity it provides you to form new and enduring friendships and for sharing experiences and perspectives in a one-of-a-kind, engaging environment. This year's Cato University is being held at the Rancho Bernardo Inn, a beautiful, quiet resort just north of San Diego. Cato University runs from July 27th to August 1st. To plan your trip to Cato University or for more information, 
Visit CatoUniversity.org. Hey everyone, have you heard about the no-no hair removal device that's sweeping the globe? If you want to go weeks without shaving and get smooth, professional quality results, here's our favorite host Cheryl for no-no hair removal. Thanks. Hey gals, I love talking about my no-no. It's this cute little hair removal system that you can take with you and use almost anywhere at home or on the road. No more expensive in-office treatments, painful waxing, and no more wasting your valuable time. Got unwanted facial hair? No-no hair has patented Thermacon technology that works on all hair and skin colors. So it's perfect for using on all body parts. And now you can take advantage of this incredible risk-free trial. Get the No-No, the facial kit, a travel case, and a $100 discount shopping card. And you don't risk a penny to try it. Try the incredible No-No hair completely risk-free. Call 1-800-953-6062. That's 800-953-6062. 800-953-6062. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keen, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, Rich Paul is our first announced keynote speaker, and more are being announced now at Keenvention.info. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. Tickets are available now at a special early bird price of just $40 via credit card or Bitcoin. That $40 price only lasts through Porkfest, so don't delay. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more, or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's keenvention.info. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers, and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Bring up whatever's on your mind here toll-free, 855-450-FREE. You don't have to talk about jails or incarceration, the corrections, business, or whatever whatever we happen to be discussing. does not have to be your topic here on Free Talk Live. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Though, would love to hear how you feel about the Keen Spiritual Retreat, a.k.a. the Cheshire House of Corrections, run by a man named Rick Van Wickler who I believe brings a level of humanity to his craft that is pretty hard to find in the world of jails. Like anybody that I've been in jail with at Cheshire County who's been in another jail will inevitably give Cheshire County accolades in comparison to the other jail. Not exactly high praise to the average radio listener that uh, an inmate would say, oh yeah, I really like it here. Um, comparatively. I don't, I don't know if they would say that, but they would say it's a better jail. They would say the food is better. They would say that the, the treatment of the guards is better. Yeah. Um, you know, that's not to say there aren't incidents that are kind of questionable. Like, you know, one night there was this girl in the suicide watch cell. They pulled her out. She was in the suicide suit or whatever you call that thing. Uh, you know, the straight jacket. Yeah. It's not really a straight jacket. I don't know what you really call it. Okay. It's, suicide suit. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, Anyway, she's in this thing, and they tased her for some reason. Now, she was probably being belligerent or whatever, but there's certain things that happen where it seems like, oh, maybe some of these guards are getting a little bit of pleasure out of bringing pain to this prisoner. 
course, you don't really know what's going on inside that person's mind. But regardless, Rick Van Wickler, the uh, the man who runs the jail here, does do something. He does a lot differently, uh, and you know it's indicated by the fact that the jail itself doesn't even have a doesn't even have a fence around it. So uh, we'll continue the story here from Vice.com. The Free State Project, of course, is the reason we talked about it earlier. It's the reason why we moved to New Hampshire from Florida. Uh, it is a destination for people who love the ideas of freedom, people who are, are sick and tired of not getting anywhere with these ideas. And libertarians, for instance, can't win an election if they try, you know, even with a bunch of money they can't win. Uh, but in, here in New Hampshire, you don't have to have a lot of money to win an election. And you can win as a Republican or a Democrat. You don't even have to bother with the Libertarian Party here. Dozens of people have been elected statewide Free State Project participants already. So we've already had more electoral success than the Libertarian Party's had in 40 years in less than 10 years here in New Hampshire. And it's not just all about uh, politics. It's also about doing what you think is most effective, whether it's doing outreach projects, as I was doing this morning at the courthouse, handing out don't take a plea deal information to folks, or you know civil disobedience, whatever you think is effective, creating media. Go to freestateproject.org. And learn more and get signed up. And come up and see us here in about three weeks. Uh, We're going to be at the Rogers Campground in the northern White Mountains of New Hampshire, enjoying the company of around 1,500 other individuals who also love freedom, and uh, essentially a week-long camping festival that's put on by the Free State Project. It is too late for you to get tickets online, but you can go and show up during that week, any old time you want to, and buy tickets in person. You don't want to miss this. If you haven't gotten your tickets yet, still, put it on your calendar, even if you can just make it up for the weekend. We're going to be there all week, broadcasting live. I'm excited about it. Looking forward to seeing you there. Porkfest.com is where to go to learn more about it. That's P-O-R-C-F-E-S-T.com. Let's go to Rob. He's in Virginia, and we'll continue with more with uh, the Cheshire Jail here in a moment and what makes it different. Rob, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, guys, that, that jail seems kind of innovative, but I thought you might want to discuss just the broader idea of should we be jailing people to punish them for crime? Yeah, I think that this is interesting, and I don't know, um, you know, like, what is a better uh, punishment? So, like, for instance, I don't think that anybody should go – there There should be – I don't think it should be criminal to possess drugs and use drugs. So that cuts out something like – 80% of people that go to jail. Not that 80% of crimes are are necessarily solely drug crimes, but you have to consider the crimes that were committed to get drugs. Very few people are committing crimes to uh, get, say, alcohol or cigarettes because these things are of limited legal legality, whereas people are certainly committing crimes to get things like heroin and crack and uh, crank and, and those sorts of things. So those crimes, likely the motivation would be uh, undermined and those crimes most of them wouldn't wouldn't occur. So then you're talking about people that steal and people that uh, harm other folks. I think that the first thing that should be done with folks that steal is is that we should talk be talking about restitution, um, you know, rather than incarceration. The, why are they being incarcerated at that point? Are they being incarcerated to keep them away from other people because they may steal again? Well, they just got caught. Um, whereas with uh, people that are you know violent and may hurt other folks, uh, then, then I'm sort of in the realm of, yeah, well, prison starts is starting to sound like it's reasonable. Well, not even uh, Rick Van Wickler, the superintendent, believes that many of the people who are in his jail should be there. And they actually address that later on in the story here tonight. But I, I also share the concerns that Mark has. I and mean, if we're talking about a psychopath, then I don't see any reason why somebody like that shouldn't be under some kind of control that would prevent them from uh, using their psychopathy on other human beings to their detriment. What do you well, think, Rob? I think, I think, you know, Charles Manson belongs in jail or, or hell. I mean, sure. I mean, some people just need to be hung or put in a cage. But, you know, prison was kind of a liberal thing back in the day, the, the, the late 19th century. You know, they used to punish people by beating them. Yeah, draw draw and quarter humiliation. Them. Well, draw and quarter is well, execution. Okay, I'm not going to go back to the, the Middle Ages, but, I mean, it's just it's – just, basically un-American to take someone's liberty away, particularly for, you know, drugs or something. I, I, I'm totally with you on agree. that, but... But if you, what do you think you are know, what do you think are different um, alternative punishments? I mean, do we know all the good punishments now, or because um, I mean, we've seen judges having young people stand with a sign on the side of the road saying things like "I was dumb, I did, you know, whatever, stole some money from dad, or whatever it was that they they did. I drove drunk, 
that kind of thing. Are you thing. talking about besides That's, restitution, Mark? Because right. Because restitution is the obvious answer there. But restitution isn't new either. The stocks, this is essentially what these judge, judges are doing with having kids holding signs on the side of the road, is putting them in the stocks. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, where... Are do we are there no new new punish are there no new ideas in the last I don't know um, of several centuries we haven't had any new ideas uh, the penitentiary as you mentioned is really um, it, it is a step forward but it's really not that much different than the dungeon. Well, I see a lot of criminals, and and you know about eighty percent of criminals are basically just stupid. When you, you say know, you see a lot of criminals, it, under what circumstances do you see them? I, I work in an attorney's office. I see a lot of you – know, we, we do criminal defense. Gotcha. And, and a lot of I – mean, the vast majority are just idiots. Mm-hmm. Okay, and, you know, there's always press stories about people who leave their – driver's license at the bank they robbed and you know i mean mostly that's a, that's a different kind of dumb what you're talking what i think most what most convicts are, are people that are very bad at sort of seeing the future well these criminals are the ones who got caught right so it's it's likely the dumber ones are the ones getting caught right but i mean 10 to 15 percent of people we're afraid of them and we represent them yeah but you know <laughs> those people need to go to jail but 85 percent of people I mean, in in the culture of criminality, you know, a lot of it is is you get street cred for being in jail. It's just lost its deterrent effect. That there are a lot of mm. people in the younger generation that, if you disrespected them publicly, like stick them in the stocks with a name over the or some some kind of you know some let people throw rotten tomatoes at them, that would they would much rather do five years in jail. Mm. It doesn't make sense. But you know, some I mean, you know, I don't want to live in a place like Singapore. But something, it's just, it's so costly, and it doesn't deter things, and it's just un-American to, to take people's liberty. And I'm with you, man. If somebody property. does not if somebody does not pose an imminent threat, imminent danger to another human being, then I don't think they should be locked in a cage. I think a lot of people that commit violent crimes don't pose immediate threats to other folks. There's yeah. a lot of evidence that uh, people who get out of prison for murder, uh, uh, there was a study done on like a thousand murderers from California, and none of them went back to jail. Mm-hmm. But the numbers of murderers going back to jail are very... Very low. You don't have mostly the gangsters that uh, you know go kill somebody and then go out and kill somebody again. You don't really have that. Right. Uh, they stay in long enough that they get older and they don't commit these things. But I think that w- when I got in trouble, my lifestyle changed immediately from the sort of low level, level low level petty criminal that I was to I'm not doing this crap. I don't like getting caught. Mm. So I don't know what it would be like for other people. But that's what it was like for me. The simple act of getting caught changed my life. So, Rob, any new ideas? You know, we talked about restitution, old idea, penitentiary system, old idea. Stocks, old idea. Stocks. What, anything fresh? Man, I was kind of you, – you guys are the creative wacky. No, we're not. We're just talk show hosts. <laughs> you would, <laughs> we got you're you the fooled. expert. <laughs> Tell you what. Thank you. Her. Thank you for the call, but yeah, uh, thanks, if you come up with another idea, let us know. I mean, I really want anybody who's got a better sure. idea for punishment, I'd love to hear it because uh, – punishment, a deterrent, a yeah. discipline, whatever the term is you want to use. I'd love to hear it because we don't have any new ideas. We have centuries-old ideas. They've been modernized, but they're really just the same. All right. We'd love to hear it from you if you want to share your ideas, 855-450-FREE. And we're just talk show hosts. If we were uh, good at brainstorming and creating things, <laughs> we'd be out there doing that and making money off of it or something. We just have opinions. 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. And you can share your opinions with us. You know Lumber Liquidators for having the best selection of flooring at the lowest prices. And right now, you can buy one floor and get 50% off another on their thickest and best dream home laminates. No games, no gimmicks, just huge savings off already ridiculously low prices. Plus, get great deals on pre-finished hardwood and Morningstar bamboo. So go to LumberLiquidators.com to find the store nearest you. Special financing is available. But hurry, this buy one, get one sale ends Tuesday, June 3rd. Gold Bond presents Shaquille O'Neal. So I'm hanging out with my Gold Bond buddies, and they're like, Shaq, Shaq, great job with the Gold Bond powder spray. People love it. So I'm soaking in the good vibes, kicking off my shoes. Next thing I know, they're coming out with a new foot powder spray. Boom. Shaq strikes again. Gold Bond No Mess Powder Spray cools and refreshes your body, and new Gold Bond Foot Powder Spray has two times the odor-absorbing powders to do the same for your feet. Stay cool with Gold Bond. 
I'm Mark Stevens of the No Stay Project. And are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you're only helping the government. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available right now. Learn it, use it, spread it. So get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Monday, June 2nd, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,245, silver opened at $18.75, and Bitcoin is trading at $627. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Voice and Exit, maximizing human flourishing through radical innovation. Tickets on sale now. Get 10% off with promo code FREEDOM, June 21st at Austin Music Hall. Get yours at voiceandexit.com. And support comes from Accountable Authority, now offering a public database of police abuse and misconduct online at accountableauthority.com. In the news, a California bill that would have required labeling of genetically engineered foods has failed. California Senate Bill 1381 failed to reach the required 21 votes needed to pass. Senator Noreen Evans, the author of the bill, attempted a reconsideration vote Thursday, but it failed to garner the necessary votes once more. Supporters of the bill said the issue would not go away and promised to renew their efforts. A controversial rule limiting carbon emissions in thousands of fossil fuel burning plants across the U.S. is to be announced Monday by the Obama administration. According to the Associated Press, the EPA will ask existing plants to cut pollution by 30 percent by 2030. The draft regulation will require no congressional approval. The EPA plan will go into effect in June 2016, following a one-year comment period. States will then be responsible for implementation with certain flexibility allowed. A new study by professors from UCLA and five other universities has concluded that geoengineering or climate engineering is not an effective option for combating climate change. The researchers spent two years examining more than 100 studies on the implications of climate engineering and their effects on greenhouse gases. The study was led by Daniela Cusack, an assistant professor of geography in the UCLA College, and will be published in the peer-reviewed journal Frontiers in Ecology and the Environment. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from My Magic Mud, all natural teeth whitener. Go to MyMagicMud.com to hear a short interview with Dr. Griffin Cole. That's MyMagicMud.com. And support comes from Brave New Books, now offering ProPure Water Filtration the only gravity-driven, all-in-one fluoride removal system that also alkalizes the water. Find them in Austin, 1904 Guadalupe Street, or online at bravenewbookstore.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, June 2nd, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. Nearly 55,000 facial recognition quality images were collected every day in 2011 by the NSA. That's according to a report from the New York Times, citing documents leaked by Edward Snowden. Apparently, the photos were gathered from emails, text messages, social media sites, and video chats. The report states the photos were then cross-referenced with other databases. Codenamed Tundra Freeze, the report highlights glaring failures in the operation, including the inability to gain accurate results when agents were using a photo of Osama bin Laden. Nonetheless, a leaked PowerPoint presentation provides examples of successes in the program. The United States government has arranged for the release of a sergeant held by the Taliban in exchange for five Guantanamo Bay detainees. 
The agreement calls for the five detainees to be released to Qatar and requires them to stay within the borders for at least a year. Sergeant Bo Bergdahl has been held by the Taliban since his capture on June 30th of 2009. House Republicans and Democrats joined together Friday, voting to keep the federal government from interfering with states where medical marijuana is legal. According to the Associated Press, the GOP-controlled House voted 219 to 189 in favor of the amendment. It was added to a bill funding the Justice Department's budget. That agency would, under the provision, be blocked from interfering with state medical marijuana laws. Following the House approval, the measure now heads to the Senate. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Mass Appeal, affordable, high-quality printing. Now accepting Bitcoin online at MassAppealLink.com. And support comes from GrowYourOwnGroceries.org, homegrown food on every table. That's GrowYourOwnGroceries.org. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, June 2nd, 2014. I'm Brian Hagen reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. For over 12 years, Halverson Enterprises CEO Peter Weathers has taken a hands-on approach in all aspects of the tech firm's growth and day-to-day -day business. But employees say the executive's true talent lies in his unique ability to recognize great ideas and then absolutely ruin them. For as long as I've worked here, Peter has been able to sit down in a meeting, listen to a million different ideas, pick out the one that makes the most sense creatively and financially, and then totally destroy it until there's basically nothing worthwhile about it left. He's remarkable. Employees throughout the company say they're most impressed by Weathers' ability to water down promising ideas with meaningless jargon, consistently choose the wrong person to head up every project, and inject virtually every halfway decent thought with his own short-sighted and terrible insights. At our all-hands meeting the other week, our team put forth a very feasible plan to boost productivity, and it was really incredible to see Peter's mind at work, just taking every good aspect of our proposal and dismantling it like a small child. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live, and we're launching into the second hour of the program. Plenty of time for you to bring up whatever's on your mind. We have been talking about corrections, as it is called, the jails of the world. One in particular is in the focus over at Vice.com, and it happens to be the one here in Cheshire County, New Hampshire, where we're doing this radio show. It's, uh, it's kind of a special place. We call it, lovingly, some of us, I don't know if you call it this, Mark, but some of us activist folks call it the uh, the keen spiritual retreat. We'll continue on explaining some of the things that make it different from your average jail and what makes the superintendent or the warden of the jail different from your average jail warden as well. We'll also take your calls and thoughts. In fact, Mark, you'd asked the question earlier, what are new ideas for punishing people for correcting behavior in the future? A lot of the ones we're looking at today are kind of old ideas. So, you know, the jail system, pr imprisoning people, uh, physical punishment, forced labor. You've also got, of course, uh, restitution, which is a big favorite of liberty-minded people. Like, you wrong somebody, you should be paying that person back, plus interest, rather than just sitting in a cage. And I think a lot of people, a lot of people, if they believed that someone genuinely was sorry for what they did, they're willing to forgive. I believe that uh, mercy and uh, forgiveness is, uh, you know, it's it's big in our society. Whether it's uh, you know inborn into the human spirit, I don't know. I wouldn't. The nature nurture that's something you can figure out for yourself. But I really believe that people want to forgive as long as they're not being tricked. Mm. And the problem with the criminal justice system is that it gives the incentive for people to trick you into thinking that you're they're you know sorry and that's you know people have become very very jaded it used, it used to be back in the day is all you had to do is pretend to be uh reformed and then you could get out and that doesn't happen at all anymore let's go to the phones and your calls and thoughts we've got tom in indiana you're on free talk live listening in michigan city to wims hey tom hey hey I think that, you know, we have a problem here is because no one can actually tell you what we are doing. Some say it's reform and other people say it's punishment. And until we can actually decide what we're doing, I don't think we can do either well. And I, I think this is some of the major problems. Uh, the man that's running the jail there 
seems to be thinking that this is a type of reform, and I'm, I'm not arguing. I, I, I think he has a lot of good ideas. Uh, but it doesn't seem like people are suffering, and a lot of times that's what people want is punishment. So, you know, I, I think the first thing is we really have to decide which is which. Yeah, I think that um, folks that – a lot of people are, you know, just the fact is, is that I come from the sort of, uh, you know, upper middle class wasp background. I went to prison for eight and a half years, though. And so I've heard both sides of this as uh, you hear things like, I've heard that there's people that want to be in jail. They want to be there. And <laughs> they are. They're called institutionalized. And no, they're not. I spent eight years working at the staff canteen next to the door that people went home. I never saw one single inmate that had to be shoved out. But they keep and they went, coming back. Well, they, they, Some of know, them cer- do. Certainly they don't, they don't have tools and skills, uh, you know, per- life skills to, to stay out of jail, some, no doubt about some it. Some people are so used to being institutionalized, it's all they know. Agreed. And they're uncomfortable being outside of the jail. They'll leave when it's time to leave the jail. But ultimately, and, and Van Wickler actually addresses this later on in the, in the article, is that you know this idea of institutionalization? It's not uncommon. It's probably not popular amongst inmates, but it's it exists. Ian, when we did those, uh, when we read that story about the drug addicts that would stop doing drugs if they got a, the incentive was good enough, usually about twenty dollars. Mm-hmm. They change their lives when the incentive was good enough. Yeah. It's the same is true for these ex-cons. The incentives stink when you get out. You get ten dollars. Excuse me. You get a hundred dollars, and you're supposed to live a good life. It's nearly impossible. Oh, for no these doubt. People. No doubt. I mean, the system does not set them up for success. I, I'm with you, and I think most people don't want to be in jail. I'm. I'm only saying there are some exceptions to your statement that some people they don't know anything else, and so that's what's comfortable. That's that's literally home. The feeling of home to those people. Very small percentage. Uh, Tom, other sh- well, uh, thoughts you want to share? Well, yeah, a couple. And, you know, it goes into, you know, truly the ones that go back were not reformed. They just Agreed. basically went back to where they were before. Um, you know, and so that's the question. Is it reforming, which, you know, I don't know if it's even physically possible, you know, to do. Well, without, it depends. Mark you know. gave his personal story. I mean, you didn't want to go back to jail. So technically well, the punishment worked on you, right, Mark? What, what they used to use a term called rehabilitation, right? They don't use the term rehabilitation um, any longer. You use the term reform or and another term is corrected, right? Reform and corrected suggest that don't suggest that you ever were habilitated. Rehabilitated suggests that you were habilitated at some point. Okay. I don't know what it's like for the rest of these guys. Many of them were coming from completely different backgrounds. I didn't need to go to prison to have changed my life. Mm. I changed my life before I went to prison because I had just gotten caught and I was out on bond. Gotcha. So I don't know what it's like for these guys. Some of these guys really need coping skills to to uh, to get when they're out there on the streets, and there that is nearly invisible in prison. Yeah, but you're saying you changed your life before you went to prison while you were out on bond, but you knew what was hanging over your head. I mean, the argument could be from the other side that, well, yeah, if you didn't have the specter of prison in the the future, the shadowing, this looming shadow of prison coming at you, that if you knew that after court that you were just going to get a slap on the hand, maybe you'd have gone back to your old life. I had never been caught for anything in my life. Hmm. Um, Not even masturbating? Well, no, but um, I don't know that that ha- what has that has to do with anything. I had never been held to account for uh, antisocial behavior up to that point. This was the first time that I got caught for anything, and fr- frankly, I didn't do what I was accused of. But that's really not the issue. Yeah. Uh, once I was caught, I realized I could be caught. I always felt like I was the smartest guy in the room. Ah, yes. Tom, thanks for your call. Anything else you want to share? Yeah, one other thing. I don't know if you've heard of the term common law. I assume that you have. Sure. Um, But there's a gentleman in Alaska, and he's running a court system or trying to get it instituted using common law. But, um, you know, the concept, I can't remember his name. I wish I could, but but I Schaefer Cox? I I really can't tell you. um, Because one of those guys is in prison now, by the way. Uh, Schaefer Cox is, is in prison. Uh, for allegedly plotting to um, murder a judge or something like that, but uh, what you know, what this this idea of this common law court is very interesting. The idea would be that you would set up your own court system and somehow get people to show up. How's that well, work? Well, the the thing is, you know, it, originally that's what like out west they had, 
and you heard the term outlaw, which I, I never understood that term. But in, in the towns, they didn't have the money to put up prisons and, and so forth. So when someone broke their laws, they basically hauled them into their little court, and they basically went through and said, you know, you you know took Mrs. Green's chicken, you know, you need to replace the chicken. If the person said, you know, who are you, you know, I don't have to deal with this law system, they would say, fine, you are an outlaw, and basically they were cast out of the city. And when they had no protection outlaw, of law. At that point, you could essentially exactly. do anything to them. Right. That person, if he walked into town, someone could go and shoot him dead in the street, and everyone would look and say, oh, he's an outlaw. Yes, he doesn't have anybody to protect him, so that's so be it. You know, and it's in a smaller and, place, the idea of the common law court might make some sense where everybody knows everybody, that kind of place. Uh, I just don't see how it would really work on a city level. Well, it could very well. Um, I mean, it could be like a credit rating. If somebody's deemed outlaw, then mm -hmm. uh, that's going to be. It's, it's a getting death it started sentence. though is a tough thing, right? Indeed. Like, it, how do you start up this common law court and get people to show up? Because the regular court system has the coercive aspect. If you don't show up, they'll send men with guns to take you, and they will put you in shackles. And then if you won't walk with them, they'll put you in a wheelchair, and they will make sure you show up uh, to the court. There would have to be some sort of incentive, and the court, you know, the incentive could eventually be that, oh, if you don't allowed. show up to court, then you'll be labeled an outlaw, and, you know, if, if this court rules against you, that's a bad thing. But in this case, if your court's so small, nobody knows about it and doesn't have any reputation, then how do you build that from scratch? That's a very tricky thing, and thank you, Tom, for your call tonight. I appreciate it. I'm not saying it shouldn't be tried. I'm not saying, you know, don't do it. Go ahead. Let's try different solutions and see what's the best, uh, the best one. Unfortunately, right now, with the government system, we don't get to try different solutions. There are, there's only one. One size fits all, and it's not that great. 855-453 is the toll-free number, and we can continue talking about jail, corrections as it's called. You can share your thoughts here on Free Talk Live. What if you could combine the two most powerful diet ingredients into one incredible weight loss super pill? We've done just that. For the first time ever, the miracle fat burner in a bottle, Raspberry Ketone, has been combined with pure Garcinia Cambogia, described as the holy grail of weight loss, to bring you the world's most powerful diet pill. Get your phone ready, because we're releasing free bottles to the first 100 callers. But wait, we haven't just combined the two most powerful weight loss ingredients. We've combined the six most powerful ingredients. Green coffee bean, African mango, moringa, and glucomonin. All the hottest clinically proven weight loss ingredients combined into one fat-shedding super pill. We call it the Skinny Six Super Supplement, and it's available for the very first time. Be one of the first 100 callers, and we'll rush you a free bottle. Call 1-800-514-2945. Find out how to get your free bottle. 1-800-514-2945. 1-800-514-2945. Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country. With a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers, how can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us the future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book, and it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. After years of weekly meetings with his psychologist, local man Chris Vaughn told reporters today he was excited to only have two sessions left before completely resolving all of his emotional issues and never having the need to return to another therapy session again. When I started therapy, I knew if I could make it through exactly 120 50-minute sessions with Dr. Warner, then all of my issues with depression and crippling anxiety would be gone. Next week, we're covering my parents. 
The week after that, we're wrapping up my trust issues and then I should be good to go. According to Vaughn, it took 40 sessions alone to fully resolve his feelings of inadequacy and low self-esteem resulting from an unhappy childhood. Vaughn's therapist, Dr. Susan Warner, told Onion reporters that she's pleased with her patient's progress and relieved that his longtime emotional and cognitive issues are nearly solved for good. I told him that getting healthy would take at least 100 hours of therapy, and now he'll never have to see me again. Thank God for that. That guy was a real f***ing piece of work. This is the Onion News Network. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit LibertyOnTheRocks.org today to get started. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Bring up anything you want here toll-free at 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. We've also got Skype. You may Skype on in and talk to us about whatever's on your mind. Skype username is lrn.fm. Don't forget, you can join us online. Head over to freetalklive.com and enjoy the features that we share with you. Those other talk show hosts charge you for accessing their sites. Ours is free. freetalklive.com. Cashintocoins.com. You have probably, if you've if you've been watching Bitcoin prices over the last few you know, week, couple weeks, you've seen a, a rise. You a may have been kicking yourself. Meteoric rise in the uh, value of Bitcoins uh, from 420 to uh, 663, a high of seven uh, 678 today. So Bitcoins are back in the move, and they've been on the move. Uh, you know, for quite some time. Ian, I remember when we were getting paid um, in Bitcoins. We were the first ad venue in the world, from what I can tell, to accept Bitcoins in payment for cool. ads. And t we were t getting them at one point less, th they were less worth less than a dollar, or yeah, less than two dollars, excuse me. And we were accepting them in payment at that time. And now they're 666 right now, 666.2 uh, for uh, Bitcoin. And that's a. Uh, that's a big difference. Hmm. If you want to be in, I think that the bitcoins are going to go much, much higher than this uh, in the into the future. But you know, that's my opinion. That my opinion may not mirror reality. But if you want to get some bitcoins, I think the best way to do that is to go to cashintocoins.com. They make it easy for you there. Their instructions are clear. It's a safe process. I've done lots of business with them. It's fast. They get it, get the bitcoins to you as quickly as they can. Completely legal. They're a licensed um, MSB. That's a money services business uh, with the federal government. It's inexpensive because their rates are great. And customer service really is their top priority. Now, there's going to be some big changes coming uh, along here in the very near future with cashintocoins.com. And uh, the big announcements are coming. Expect them soon. But you can... All, every, every business you do with them is still going to be, you know, transactions going to complete. Just because the changes are coming along doesn't mean anything bad's happening. It's all good news. So um, expect r great rates when you go to cashintocoins.com to get bitcoins. All right, let's continue here. We can also talk more about the jail, as we've been discussing, is sort of the overarching topic of the show so far tonight. Still to come is a story about seasteading. They're back in the news. What is seasteading? Maybe you're brand new to the idea. Well, Mark will be sharing that with us a little bit later on. Plus, our special guest host will be joining us in mere moments. Uh, the toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Tom is in New Hampshire. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Tom. Yeah. It, you Just let me touch on one thing. You point out that uh, some of these people get out of prison without the uh, <clears throat> life skills or whatever resources they need uh, to stay out of going back to prison. And uh, maybe some of them just uh, 
are frustrated that they did not get picked, or simply it's because they did not get picked by the bureaucrats to have a casino license, a banking license, a broadcasting license, a taxing medallion, a zoning variance, or whatever else. The other people uh, had the right connections, maybe uh, paid off a few people, uh, and they have the resources they need uh, to pay the bills. And uh, these Prisoners getting out uh, don't know how to work the system or they don't have the right connections, and so they wind up going back. Uh, now, uh, let, let me get to the point that I was calling about, and that is uh, recently, you know, the uh, uh, there was this uh, press release from the White House about uh, the president's surprise visit to Afghanistan, and they mentioned the name of the CIA uh, station chief in uh, Kabul, Afghanistan, Okay. Uh, in there, and, and this was a news story. Oops, we accidentally disclosed uh, who that uh, CIA <laughs> agent is, and you're not supposed to do that. But you know, when people register to vote, they uh, are asked to put down their Social Security number and their driver license number mm -hmm. and all this other good stuff, which uh, the bureaucrats sh sh use to see, like, let's say somebody moved from one county to another without telling the old county that they moved, and they register in the new county. Now they're registered twice, but it's the driver license number that positively identifies them as the same person. So right. they can check that, as opposed to a name, which they, they may have changed their name when they got married and moved to the next county over. And they, they're they sharing across state lines uh, with their sister states, and they use the Social Security number to check uh, for duplicates there. Okay. And wouldn't it be hilarious if some guy in New Hampshire who has this thing about registered voter lists and orders them from the different states and publishes their contents online wound up ordering a registered voter list from one of the states and they accidentally sent him the unedited version with everybody's social oh. security numbers and driver's license numbers? Oh, wouldn't that my be hilarious? Goodness. Wow, thanks for the call. Oh. Um, uh, he's referring to himself there, by the way. He's called previously to talk about how he's ordered uh, lists from the state of Utah. I know that one in particular, and has published that information online. Yeah, uh, this is why wow. government agencies shouldn't get your information. This is why you should try to avoid giving your information to anyone, honestly. But the government, who's, who's going to be responsible for this? Who's going to get fired for this? Nobody. If you can even prove who did it. I mean, this Nobody. guy was just sent some information by one of the bureaucrats in the office, wherever it was, you know, the various different offices. Well, that's amazing. Amazing. I guess not really that amazing. You shouldn't be shocked by this. It's just bureaucratic incompetence. It's right? it, 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 I, I, I get so often I'm shocked by bureaucratic incompetence. All right. So you can bring up anything that you want. Share your experience with ridiculous bureaucracy. Now, not all bureaucrats are created equal. And Rick Van Wickler of the Cheshire County House of Corrections, a.k.a. the Keen Spiritual Retreat, I think he's a cut above your standard prison warden or jail uh, warden. In this case, superintendent is his title. And the article over at Vice.com that we've been sharing throughout the show tonight and we're going to delve back into here really kind of shows some of the, the differences, the, the key differences between the way Van Wickler's jail is run versus other jails. And the article's author is being taken on a tour. He's told he can take pictures of anything that he wants to and ends up going inside the jail uh, housing unit to talk to some of the prisoners here in just a moment. But first, Van Wickler is talking about the old way of doing jailing where uh, they, it was called linear internment, meaning that you have to move uh, people around constantly. You want them to go eat, you got to move them to the eating facility. You want them to go and do some programming, you have to move them to the programming facility. And he says that that means that, uh, that there could be more assaults that might happen as a result of that. It's also fairly inefficient as well because of all that moving around. I, I remember visiting uh, inmates at the old jail when they had this old system and, you know, they had to bring a person down physically and that means that a free guard has to be freed up and then sent to the, the cell block to take the person out of the cell and take them down to where the visiting area is. And all that stuff takes time, and it's not particularly efficient. 
So he says, continuing with this linear internment, you'd have control rooms monitoring inmates through one-way glass or through cameras. Under that old style of architecture, the inmates would behave as though the area where they lived was their real estate. So when you went in to bring them meals or to do a head count, you were encroaching on their territory, and they gave you that sense. You're in my house. Well, the way we do things here, we're in their area every day, and that takes away a sense of ownership that they have over that real estate. Then we get to meet the first inmate that the author uh, got to meet in the story, and I think it's pretty interesting. It was something that shocked me and surprised me pleasantly about the facility that I've spent a couple of months of my life in, and I didn't realize this was going on, and maybe it wasn't at the time that I was there. 855-450-FREE is the toll-free number. You can share your thoughts on jail or whatever. Question. Could too many GMO foods and toxins be overloading your digestive and immune systems? Answer, yes. If you're searching for a powerful detox that's gentle enough to use every day, use Pro-EM-1 from Terragonics. Pro-EM-1 is a powerful liquid probiotic that uses good bacteria to suppress pathogens and gently eliminate toxins from your body. A healthy digestive system will cleanse and remove toxins, support weight loss, improve absorption of food nutrients, and aid in controlling yeast and other infections. Pro-EM-1 is made with only non-GMO and certified organic ingredients, has no preservatives, and is dairy, soy, wheat, and gluten-free. Pro-EM-1 is the key to your digestive health. Order Pro-EM-1 Daily Probiotic Cleanse at Terragonics.com, spelled T-E-R-A-G-A-N-I-X.com. Or call toll-free, 866-369-3678. That's 866-369-3678. Also available through Amazon Prime. Pro EM1 from Terraganics. Life's getting better. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more all originating here. Though, it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. Are you looking for camping, hunting, survival, or shooting gear? ManVentureOutpost.com carries the name brands you want at the lowest prices. Ammunition, knives, firearm accessories, archery, air guns, scopes, binoculars, laser sights, tactical flashlights, fish finders, and boating equipment. ManVentureOutpost.com is family owned and has the lowest prices. Go check it for yourself. Get it quick. Get it from ManVentureOutpost.com. Now buy firearms at ManVentureOutpost.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Hi, I'm Montel Williams. Most of you know me as a talk show host, but I'm also an author, actor, single father of four, a fitness writer, avid snowboarder, and I'm also a medical marijuana patient. Like many of the million people who are living with multiple sclerosis, I'm in pain every single day. And sometimes my nerves are so raw that if you brushed up against me in an elevator, I'd scream. I can't sleep at night from the pain, and sometimes the spasms in my legs are so intense they will wake me up throughout the night. I've tried the strongest prescription medications available, and I'm gonna tell you, they do not work. In fact, they leave me in a stupor, and most of the time, it's impossible to even live your life. Now, I've tried medical marijuana, and I'm gonna tell you something, it works. If you'd like more information about medical marijuana, you can contact the Marijuana Policy Project at mpp.org or call 1-877-JOIN-MPP. 
You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up whatever's on your mind toll free at 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. We have Skype. You can Skype into the show at username lrn.fm. So feel free to connect with us there if you have that as an option. We'd prefer it because generally you'll sound better if you're on Skype. And welcoming back to the show, Derek J. Hey guys, it's good to be with you. Great to have you back. It's been a while, huh? You know, it's appropriate that you come back and we have to be talking about uh, the Cheshire Spiritual or the, the Keene Spiritual Retreat, a.k.a. the County Jail. That's right. On the show here tonight. It's making national news from Vice.com and a feature story. You've spent uh, two months of your life there? At least. Yeah, I have. How many and, days was it? Uh, 60 total, then plus the days of being locked up. You know, when you get arrested, you get that, arrested yeah. that doesn't count towards the, the time, uh, typically. But yeah, I was shocked to see this story on Vice.com and then see, oh my gosh, look, they've taken a picture right from cell block D. Where, <laughs> where I know, you spent time. I know you were there, Ian. And I was I never was, in D. Oh, okay. No. Well, I, well, I was there for a little bit of time, so it was amazing to see that this picture right on Vice.com is a place where I had spent some time called home for a little while. It's, uh, it's It was an interesting occasion, and I, I heard the guys on the show last night on the Sunday edition of the mm-hmm. program talking about um, a viewpoint on life and kind of this uh, sort of a new age uh, spiritual viewpoint. And one of the viewpoints I like is that in retrospect, when you look back Everything tends to happen for your good, like for your benefit. Generally, life moves in that direction. And I know we've talked about how in jail certain things uh, were the result of that, I think, that maybe we weren't expecting going in, but then after afterwards, for instance, you used to be a veg- vegetarian, yeah, and that changed after jail. <laughs> That's right, and uh, maybe it was for the better, actually. Uh, you seem I, happy about the change. I am happy about it. I was unhappy at the time that my requests for a vegetarian diet weren't being honored. You know, I, they guards would come up to me and, you know, like lean over and whisper like, Hey, you know, we can get you a vegetarian meal. You just have to say it's a religious thing, you know. Ah. They were they were trying to help me out, but I didn't want to be helped by lying. I didn't want to lie and say it was a religious thing because it wasn't. It was just that was my preference. preference. And I wish that that were just honored as a human to human request that this is not what I want to be eating. It gives my stomach trouble. Would you just please give me some vegetables? <laughs> is that too much to ask? But it was and uh, they ended up giving me meat and because of that, now I'm a meat eater and I love bacon. And um, I'm singing the praises of all, all the meat eaters you out there. You also quit smoking cigarettes while you were in jail. That as was well. a huge change, and that was because yeah. of jail. You know, right. I had I had committed to quitting, but I don't know if I would have had uh, as much success if I weren't, you know, physically restrained from. <laughs> accessing cigarettes. And you never know who you're going to touch when you're in there as well. And I know that after the fact <laughs> of... That wasn't a perverted joke or anything. Just amused. Uh, but anyway, uh, you know, I had conversations with some of the jail guards, one of them in particular, Brian Tan, who uh, was, you know, he was in there the whole time that I was there as a guard. And right. now he's no longer working for that jail. In fact, he no longer works at a jail. He left that job, and he actually came and spoke at Keenvention last year. Yeah, he was the the ending, the closing speaker, and he really did an amazing job telling his story. You know, where did he come from? He thought that he could get into this position and make it kind of a change from the inside. Turned out it wasn't as great as he, you know, his opportunity to do that wasn't what he thought that it was going to be, but. The fact that he was able to interact with people like me, maybe you, and Rich Paul as well, the, these are conversations he had over time that helped him shift his position and change who he is as a person. It had a real impact. I cried at that speech. People can watch the videos uh, online, I think, at freekeen.com. Keenvention.info, oh, actually, is the easiest the way to find them all. Yeah. Well, I, I got to speak with Brian uh, Tan, the speaker at Keenvention, and ask for an apology, frankly, for being so rude. I had mm-hmm. written about him uh, the, as prison guard. I'm not used to people t- touching me in private areas, bathing suit area. And this is something that happens frequently in jail. The guards have the authority to touch you basically wherever they want. Mm-hmm. And that was uncomfortable for me. I voiced that and I wrote about it, blogged about it, and I really upset him at the time. We made peace afterwards. So uh, that's nice. all good. Yeah. Yeah. And I know he did that with Bo Davis, who was in there at the same time as well. And they had had some, 
I guess some some sort of fr- friction previously, and that was also ironed out. Well, it's so. another world. I mean, the way you were talking about it last segment about Rick uh, Van Wickler, who describes the real estate that these uh, prisoners have and how they want to keep it away from them. I mean, think about that in any other context. It's a completely different world on on the other side. It is. I just wanted to kind of go over a couple of things that came out of being in jail that. You know, the, the big question I was asked when I was in there, and you, know, you and I were getting mail when we were in there from right. people, and, and one of the big questions is always, was it worth it? You know, there mm-hmm. you are. Oh, you you could be out doing radio. We love it when you're on the radio, Ian. You should be out doing radio. Mm-hmm. But for me, that was an important chapter in my life, yeah. and uh, I'm glad I went there. Not because I'm corrected or that I you know respect the state or anything like that. They didn't correct me in that way. Uh, they didn't correct me at all from their from whatever their goals for me were. They didn't succeed, but there were experiences that I had there that I couldn't have had anywhere else, and I'm mm-hmm. really quite glad that I had them. And I'm also glad that I had them at the Cheshire County Jail as opposed to other jails. And one of the other things we've been doing tonight is juxtaposing uh, Cheshire's jail versus other jails. And you know, as I was saying before. Anybody who's ever been to a different jail, who's also been to the Keene Spiritual Retreat, a.k.a. the county jail, to a man, they will tell you it's a better experience at oh, Cheshire. Yeah. Absolutely. All the inmates that I spoke with, uh, many of them had been in corrections facilities in other parts of the country. And they all told me, without a doubt, this was the best, had the best food, the best treatment, um, the, the best corrections officers most respectful and they felt safer that that was an important thing yeah uh that the prisoners in this jail felt safe i can't imagine what it would be like being in a place where not only are do you have all your freedoms taken away but you also don't feel safe how many of them said they wanted to stay well, it's it's unclear. I, I bet they would rather not stay, but then there was right. a weird. But then there was a weird situation of people coming back, and I think uh, Ian has said one time where someone walked in and said, "Honey, I'm home." I mean, this is yeah, their well, they're right. institutionalized <laughs> to a degree, and and a lot of them they make return visits quite frequently. I think New Hampshire, you know, for as bad as. Uh, the, as good as the Cheshire County Corrections Facility is, uh, it has a high recidivism rate in New Hampshire, more than other, any other state, I think. Well, I don't know what the recidivism rate, but the crime rate's very low. Well, it's just interesting that it's the same kind. It's the same people who are uh, ending up behind bars over and over again. Recidivism rates tend to be very high when you're talking about people. Um, I think it's seventy percent um, or something like that is the expectation of uh, whether somebody will return or not. It's rather high. It's just not effective correction at all. It's something's mean, it's not working. Not effective. So let's uh, explore a little bit here. Some of the inmates, the experience the author of the article had with inmates, and this was a shock to me. I didn't realize this either wasn't going on when I was in the jail. Uh, or just wasn't aware that it was going on. The first inmate, says the author at Vice.com, that I met in the woman's wing, that's F-block as it's called, was a cat named Polo. All right. A cat in the jail. No, no, it's a it's a slang term. No. He's from the Humane Society, says the warden. We have this agreement that the women will take care of the pets until they're adopted. It's been very good for the pets, and it's been very good for the women. What? Isn't that cool? I just am struck by that as like one of the neatest ideas I've ever heard. That's not so bad. I mean, because you know they bring pets to people in the hospital, right? Like to kind of raise their spirits. That's right. a common thing. Somebody's sick in bed, you bring a dog in or a cat, whatever their preference, and it raises their spirits. They're more likely to get better faster, that kind of thing. It's got to be a good thing for somebody who's in a jail cell, too. Well, I've got to say that it's one of the worst. For me, it was one of the worst things, one of the, the, the biggest aching emptiness for me was my inability to touch an animal mm. while I was in in prison. Um, I went from you could touch your cellmate. <laughs> that's great. You just got to keep it secret. Um, the, the so I went from <laughs> this uh, place, uh, Brevard Correctional Institution, which we uh, called Gladiator School, to um, a, a place called you know that was much nicer, uh, Avon Park Correctional Facility, and actually the work camp, and they had these sort of tame squirrels. Mm-hmm. There, that if you brought out the, uh, the, uh, the sunflower seeds you purchased at the canteen, would come and get them. They'll line up for them, huh? Uh, they absolutely will. I actually would keep some in my mouth um, and, you know, just kind of spit out the seeds. The squirrel figured out that it was in the mouth. I actually had a squirrel kind of <gasps> clawing wow. lightly at my mouth in order to get these, uh, these these sunflower seeds. I quickly gave the squirrel as many sunflower seeds as he wanted uh, because I didn't Take like the idea of a uh, <laughs> tree rat biting a hole in my face to get to those we'll sunflower We'll come back seeds. with more. I was really surprised to hear that. I think it's another indication. This is something kind of a special facility. It's Free Talk Live. 
Stop harming your body with coffee from grocery stores or most chains. Start making a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Camano Island Coffee Roasters to offer you a free pound of BuzzBox coffee. It's organic, so no harmful pesticides or toxins. Shade grown, meaning less acidity and no heartburn. Try the best of the best for free. Just cover shipping. 10% of future purchases go toward helping us give the gift of human freedom around the globe with at least 100 microloans via World Vision. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. Today, people go to college, do coursework, repeat what professors tell them, get degrees, and are issued official transcripts from state-approved institutions. In the future, people will learn online and obtain pseudonymous academic credentials associated with their Bitcoin address. That future is now. At mathgate.info, you can learn basic reasoning skills. Instead of a transcript, you can earn cryptographic proof that the owner of your Bitcoin address learned these skills. For more information, come to mathgate.info. You've been lied to. Lied to by Washington politicians and the Wall Street propaganda machine. My name is Brett Kitchen, best-selling author, and I want to give you free access to my new DVD set, The Millionaire Black Box. Because after losing 35% in my IRA in the crash years ago, I said enough. And since then, I've filmed interviews with dozens of millionaires across the country. I was shocked to discover they don't use mutual funds or worry about stock market crashes. They make double digits in good years and bad. Call now to get this DVD where millionaires reveal five specific wealth strategies like private lending contracts, how to use your IRAs or cash in the bank to make potential double digits each year, tax-free retirement income using the biggest benefits left in the tax code, and how to beat inflation with two strategies you'll never hear from Wall Street. Call 1-800-324-3030 to get free access to the Millionaire Black Box videos and learn the secrets the ultra-rich use to grow your money and protect your wealth. Plus, the next 47 callers get a free copy of my best-selling book, Safe Money Millionaire. Just cover shipping and handling. Call 800-324-3030. Again, that's 1-800-324-3030. 1-800-324-3030. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. MindThings.com is a fun online game that pits you against people around the world to mine for scarce resources. Do business in a capitalist economy with virtually mined gold, tax-free. It doesn't require a big-time commitment. Your little mining robot guy works whether you're logged in or not. It costs nothing to play, but you can buy bonuses. They even accept bitcoins. Go to MindThings.com, use coupon code FTL, and double your mining speed. It's free. MindThings.com. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. Bring up anything toll-free here. 855-450-FREE. Also, if you want to share with us your experience with the jail system, the correction system. Did did you get corrected by the system? The toll-free number is 855. I didn't. Derek, you're shaking your head. <laughs> no. You didn't either. I'm still pretty mistaken. You're mistaken? Well, I'm not correct. Oh, gotcha. Right. 855 450 free. You can share your Did thoughts. Did Ian there. laugh at that joke? <laughs> and, I mean, yeah. it's, 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 my goodness. You can Skype into the show, username lrn.fm. If I, just, if I had only known what it took to make Ian laugh at a joke. Um, the North American Bitcoin Conference is going to be held July the 19th and 20th 
in Chicago at the Cormac Place South Building. Now, um, this is going to be a big event. The one, the last event that went on in Miami, they expected eh, 500 people to show up. 2,500 people showed up. That's kind of the nature of these Bitcoin events. Obviously, we can't say how many people are going to be at this event. Could it be more than uh, Miami? Certainly possible. This is a bigger metro. There's never been a Bitcoin event in Chicago. So there, who knows? Um, the, the venue can, can handle it. Um, we've got the, the speakers lined up, and they're great speakers. People like Kathy Reisenwitz, um, people like Jeff Berwick, uh, Jeff Berwick of the Dollar Vigilante, uh, Trace Meyer of the Armory Wallet, Peter Smith of Blockchain.info, Flip Filipowski of uh, Peace Ash Action Network, Charlie Lee, the creator of uh, Litecoin, Tony Gallippi, uh, the CEO of B BitPay. He's at just about everything. Roger Veer, a good friend of the show, is going to be there. And, of course, Ian and I will be doing live uh, you know, live the live broadcast of Free Talk Live both nights at the North American Bitcoin Conference. And I think it's going to be very exciting. You can go get your tickets. If, if by the way, you're in Chicago, this is about, be Free Talk Live's first time in Chicago doing a live show. So you should come out and see us. Cool. BTCChicago.com to get your Bitcoin or to get your uh, tickets to the North American Bitcoin Conference. And you can pay in Bitcoin if you wish. BTCChicago.com. All right, excellent. We'll look forward to seeing uh, many listeners there, hopefully. Our toll-free number tonight, 855-453. We're continuing with a feature story over at Vice.com. I posted a link on our Facebook, Google+, and Twitter. You can uh, take a look at it. they got some good pictures of the facility there. And Van Wickler, the, uh, the, the superintendent of this jail that is here in Cheshire County, New Hampshire, where we're doing this show from. It's a different jail. It's run very differently than your typical jail or your typical prison. And there's some things that are, I think, outstanding about it that really deserve to be focused on. And this does that. This article does that. In fact, uh, Van Wickler even gets a chance to go off against prohibition later on in the article, which is his kind of main issue. He used to be a member of law enforcement against prohibition. We'll uh, get to that. There's actually a picture of Van Wickler smoking what appears to be a joint, but it couldn't, possi couldn't possibly be a joint. I, it references him as smoking a cigar earlier in the, the story. But the, the way it's the way the picture is framed, the way the cigar looks, it, it almost looks like he's taken a drag off of a joint. Sure does. So uh, back to the story here. There, there, the author has entered to uh, F Block. He is meeting now some of the inmates, and the first inmate he meets is a cat. Apparently, there's some new program there at the jail that actually allows animals uh, into F Block, which is the the female block. And I think that's a really neat idea. To, Sounds sexist to me. Why, why don't the guys get a cat? I don't know. Maybe yeah, maybe the guys are allowed to have cats. I'm I'm presuming it's only F Block. Anyway, he points to the exercise yard and enclosed space. Inmates were walking in a circle. Doors will open in the top to allow fresh air to come in, said Van Wickler. The standard is for offenders to have fresh air. They don't have to see the clouds or the horizon, and here they don't. That gets into the punishment factor. If you're here for three years and you've never seen the horizon, can you imagine? I would think that's a pretty significant infringement on one's liberty. The warden stepped off to talk with an officer as I sat down with two of the inmates, Amanda and Maria. There was a half-finished Scrabble game between them. Gain, I queried, pointing to one of the words, G-A-N-E. That's the past tense of go, Maria laughed. She likes to make up her own words, Amanda explained. Buteo, B-U-T-E-O. That refers to beauty, Maria affirmed. <laughs> it just refers to it. Well, I chuckled. <laughs> what does that mean? You two seem to be having fun here. Do you all really get along that well? No, not at all, Amanda confessed. We're just pretending. It's 30 women and 50 personalities. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, I'm sure that cuts down on the boredom at least, uh, at least a bit, I offered. What's it like being here? It could be worse, Amanda shrugged. There's a lot of programs here. The corrections officers are amazing. It's clean. The food's not that bad. The corrections officers are amazing. You don't hear that very often. No, you really don't. And there were some issues that, you know, one could have with some of these officers and the way that they did their jobs. But overall, the way Van Wickler does hiring there... He does look for a different kind of person than is normally hired by a jail. It, Van Wickler doesn't seem to be a sadist, and so that doesn't get duplicated by his jail staff. I think for the most part. There may be some exceptions, some 
here yeah. and there. Some of the corrections officers even talk about their own personal philosophies of care, you know, looking out for the prisoners that are there. They're, they think of them as, as they're, they're taking care of them. Right. What a different uh, mindset. He talks uh, earlier in the article about how uh, the standard corrections mentality is care, custody, care custody and, control. and control. And he yeah. says that at their prison or at their jail, it's care, custody, and management. Man. Because mm. he tells all of his employees that you aren't controlling anyone. You're not here to control anyone. You cannot control anyone. The problem with that, Don't though, try to control. is that uh, it's not alliterative. That's true. <laughs> right. So going on here, uh, how are the corrections officers amazing, he asks the, uh, the prisoner. Yeah, right. It's a stunning st- statement. Oh, before that, she said the food's not bad. We get to work. I was in Merrimack before, which is a different jail in New Hampshire. It's a rougher place without those kinds of privileges. So he asks, how are the corrections officers amazing? She says the way they treat us is very respectful. They refer to us as Mrs. or Ms. so-and-so, not inmate so-and-so. And we do the same for them. I call them by their last name, Mr. and Mrs. I don't call them officer. That weirds me out. Okay. And uh, there are places where, you know, and I've had this happen, where you'll ask a police officer or a corrections officer, what's your name? And they'll tell you the flip response, officer. Uh, Because that's what they want you to call them. Is just by their title. Right. Some of the officers at the jail prefer officer and, and don't respond to mister. I, I tried to get away with as much mister as I could, but they prefer officer. The way they uh, the, also, when they do a room search, they fold our blankets back up, said Maria. They don't toss everything. I'm from Mass. That's Massachusetts. In Mass, we'll toss everything. Everything ends up in a pile on the floor. Yep. Here, they're teaching us to be respectful of ourselves and one another, which, of course, a lot of us need to learn. So what are you in for, I asked. Unlawful concealment, she replied. And what does that mean? Attempting to shoplift and failing, Amanda added with a laugh. How about your crime? My alleged crime is the manufacture of methamphetamine, said Amanda. I asked to take photographs, and the women posed playfully like movie stars. So pretty, Amanda laughed. So skinny. Send us copies or I'll hunt you down, Maria threatened with a smirk. Uh, I said my goodbyes and returned with the warden. As we walked out, I noted that the white floor of the corridor was interspersed with multicolored tiles. Van Wickler said, when members of the public see that, first see that, a lot of times they ask, why do you do that? It makes things too nice. I always say, remember that this is a place of employment as well. There are 80 employees here, and aren't they entitled to a decent workplace? Aren't they entitled to a little bit of color? Yeah, let's not forget that the, you know, <laughs> the problem with institutions is that People have to work there. Now, an inmate may be in a a prison for three years or five years or whatever period of time. Mm. The officers, oftentimes, they're doing 25 years in that place. Um, They get to go home at the end of the day, but they still have to spend time there. Where do you spend most of your waking time? Honestly, at work is is top of that list. And they're long shifts, too. I mean, they're on for a full, what is it, eight, ten hours or something like that? I see no problem with making uh, jails better. I understand why people don't want uh, inmates to get ice cream Sundays uh, every week and um, to have cable programming. But oftentimes when they would use the term cable programming, what they mean is closed circuit television programming that is delivered by cable, mm-hmm. not what you pay premium, not what premium channels that you pay for. You don't get HBO at the Cheshire County House of Corrections, but you do get MTV. Well, there you go. There is not a criminal who is alleged to, oh, excuse me, I skipped the line here. Uh, I asked what kind of prisoners we could expect to find at our next stop, the maximum security block. There's not a criminal who's alleged to have committed a crime anywhere on the planet who's not in this prison. We don't handpick our inmates. Some pretrial offenders are here on federal contract. I asked, well, how do you determine what level of security each prisoner gets? Well, in the old paradigm, 60% of the population was considered maximum security, but the way it was assigned was pretty arbitrary. Here we do things differently. We make an objective review with data to determine one's classification. With our system, you should have fewer than 10% in maximum security. That's important because if your mindset is that everybody's maximum security, you're treating people like maximum security inmates. Here, we keep apples with apples, oranges with oranges, and snow tires with snow tires. If you mix them, that's when you have assaults and sexual assaults and strong arming. We entered a control room enclosed in glass. That, that's just, that just makes sense, and he's absolutely right. They just, they just don't take responsibility for that in other jails. J- just throwing people in yeah. wherever? Just throw them wherever. Toll free this, is why, this is how people get raped in prison. Yep. 855-450 free. That's 855-450-3733. We continue with more on the Keen Spiritual Retreat, a place where Derek J and I have personal experience. 
here in moments. You can share your experiences with whatever jail or correction system. Did it work for you? It's Free Talk Live. You know Lumber Liquidators for having the best selection of flooring at the lowest prices. And right now, you can buy one floor and get 50% off another on their thickest and best dream home laminates. No games, no gimmicks, just huge savings off already ridiculously low prices. Plus, get great deals on pre-finished hardwood and Morningstar bamboo. So go to LumberLiquidators.com to find the store nearest you. Special financing is available. But hurry, this buy one, get one sale ends Tuesday, June 3rd. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges start a conversation with your neighbor or your doctor or your family or your school. Now there's teachers and lawyers and business executives and they all wear shiny badges and they all reject the state. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges show the world that you reject coercion and aggression and oppression by the state. Shinybadges.com So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. Radio VR. Good morning and welcome to Radio VR. We're broadcasting live from Washington, D.C. and around the world on voiceofrussia.com slash U.S. I'm Kate Zickel. And I'm Rick Young. Today is Monday, June 2nd, 2014. Radio VR News. President Obama is moving ahead with dramatic and controversial plans to curb emissions from coal-fired power plants. White House correspondent Mark Smith reports on the president's latest attack on global warming. It's the latest front in the president's bid to limit the gases tied to global warming. Changes we're seeing in our climate means that Uh, Unfortunately, uh, storms like Sandy could end up being more common. His warning came visiting FEMA as this year's hurricane season began and as he taped his weekly media address at Children's Hospital to highlight health problems caused by belching smokestacks. But Obama's leaving it to EPA Chief Gina McCarthy to make today's announcement. The White House denies it's because Republicans are girding to make coal state Democrats pay for these rules at the polls. Mark Smith at the White House. Opponents of the president's plan to slash emissions at coal-fired power plants warn it would exact a huge price. Jerry Bonelander has the reaction. The U.S. Chamber of Commerce warns the proposal will raise electricity prices and shut down power plants across the country. And it frightens Congressman Nick Rahal of West Virginia, where coal is a key part of the economy. It will be very bad for jobs. The only real question is where, on a scale from devastating to a death blow, the new rule will fall. Republicans will likely criticize the president for using his executive authority because he wouldn't be able to win congressional approval for the plan. Jerry Bodlander, Capitol Hill. Emotions run high as family and friends have welcomed the news that Army Sergeant Bo Bergdahl has been released from Taliban captivity. Correspondent Diane Kepley reports on the former captured soldier's family. A hometown celebration as the family and friends of Army Sergeant Bo Bergdahl cheer his release by the Taliban. You are free. Freedom is yours. I will see you soon, my beloved son. I love you, Bo. And his mother says she wants nothing more than to hold her son again. But Bo's father admits his son still has a long recovery ahead of him. Bo has been gone so long. Um that it's going to be very difficult to come back. Bob Bergdahl says he is proud of his son's perseverance and courage and praised his son for how far he was willing to go to help the Afghan people. I'm Diane Kepley. 
Some members of Congress continue to criticize the White House for the deal that won the release of captured soldier Bo Bergdahl. They also say the release of five Guantanamo detainees could compromise the security of the United States. Jackie Quinn has the details. Some, like Texas Republican Senator Ted Cruz, are criticizing the prisoner exchange. Have we just put a price on other U.S. soldiers? What does this tell terrorists? And some are outraged the decision was made without the required 30 days congressional notification. But National Security Advisor Susan Rice says Bo Bergdahl's health and safety were in jeopardy. We did not have 30 days to wait, and had we waited and lost him, uh, I don't think anybody would have forgiven uh, the United States government. She says over the years there were extensive consultations with lawmakers. Both Rice and Cruz appeared on ABC's This Week. Jackie Quinn, Washington. <laughs> New York Senator Charles Schumer is proposing a new federal database to provide children's organizations with access to the criminal background reports of adults seeking to work with kids. Julie Walker explains how the system might work. Schumer's proposed legislation follows recent child pornography charges against 71 people in the New York area, including a Boy Scout leader and a Little League coach. The critical information that's being withheld would allow a sexual predator, a sexual offender, to work with children. That's a terrifying thought. Schumer says right now the only way organizations that work with children can find out about prospective employees is through private background checks that are less thorough than the FBI's. Julie Walker, New York. In health news, an expensive drug has been found to help some men with prostate cancer. Tim McGuire with the details. A study finds that docetaxel, a chemotherapy drug that's been around for decades, extended life by more than a year when added to standard hormone therapy for men with prostate cancer that has spread. The government-funded study found that men who got the drug lived nearly five years compared to the less than four years for those men who were not given the drug. The results were discussed in a meeting of some 30,000 cancer specialists in Chicago. I'm Tim McGuire. And that's the news for Radio VR in Washington. I'm Kate Zickel. And I'm Rick Young. Are you a helpless moron perplexed by the world? Wish there was a device that enabled you to consult the Onion Book of Known Knowledge anytime, anywhere? Then you need the Book Bjorn, the amazing new wearable invention that makes you and the Onion Book of Known Knowledge inseparable. Never again be stumped by the panoply of bizarre objects filling your field of vision. Never take it off. Never be without it. All this for just four easy payments of $39.93. The Book Bjorn. The Book, the Book Bjorn. And if you call now, you'll receive the special page-turning wand. Turn pages with the greatest of ease. The special reading light to wrench knowledge from utter darkness. The book umbrella to protect the onion book of known knowledge's precious pages from the elements. Book, 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 book Bjorn. This $800 value can be yours today. Send a check or money order to the Book Bjorn, care of the Zwiebel Center for Knowledge Studies, 15 Zwiebel Way, Macau, China. Do not hesitate. Buy now. The Book Bjorn. This is Free Talk Live, and we're launching into the third hour of the program. Still to come tonight, Seasteading. We get a chance, we'll tell you more about that. It is back in the news. Derek J is joining us again. Welcome back, Derek. Woohoo! Good to be with you. And for those that don't know, Derek J is the host of Peace News Now. You do your own long form talk show, you do it twice per week, Sundays. That's right. And Tuesday nights. Yes. Uh, Sunday afternoons and Tuesday nights. You can listen live at lrn.fm, but also peacenewsnow.com is where correct. you can go for archives and the video feed. Yeah. If you want to watch the video, if you're not just an audio consumer and you want to watch the live video of the show, you can check it out at peacenewsnow.com slash live. And there's a chat room. You can interact with other listeners. And you've got a good thing going there, uh, Peace News Now. I'm glad you it's started It's a lot that. of fun, yeah. And we have people who call in. Uh, we have people who Skype into the show. It's interactive. And uh, I like to be on the front lines of what's going on in the world of peaceful resistance. So that's really what we focus on is people standing up to authority in peaceful and creative ways. And that's sort of my thing, and I love it. So I'm going to keep going and uh, following those types of news stories. How long has it been go uh, going now? Because I know that you used to do Peace News Now as a daily news cast at the same time you were doing uh, the long form show. Yeah. You've ceased doing the newscast because it was just too much on your plate. You had a lot going yeah. on. 
Um, but I knew you were doing the newscast for at least like three fourths of a year. So yeah. has it been a year and a half? I mean, how long yeah. has it been? Yeah, it has been. Uh, we started in November 2012, okay. and uh, so it has been about a year and a half now. Congrats. And we'll be celebrating our two years. Yeah, it's amazing. I, I can't even believe uh, how time has flown. But check it all out at peacenewsnow.com. That's the best place to see the peaceful resistance news. And now being uh, recorded in Studio B. <laughs> That's right, LRN Studio B here, which uh, you were you were kind of moving uh, in and getting things set up and I was like oh well you can do the show down in the regular studio now and I didn't realize that you have your own backdrop and there's like there's a whole video aspect to your show that you couldn't duplicate there's in a our lot studio. of hubbub bub. so even though you're broadcasting from LRN's actual studios you now have your own LRN studio. Because That's right, and it's quite cool. nice. We're going to do some fun things with green screen. So oh, really? Check, yeah, so check it all You've out. You've not done that before, right? No, we, we did some things with green screen on another show that I've done, but uh, this is, will be the first time for Peace News Now. So we're talking jails tonight, one jail in particular, and kind of comparing it to other jails out there. And I need to make a correction before we go into your phone calls. I received an email from Rick Van Wickler uh, during the show tonight. So he's listening? I uh, know, no. no. Okay. Maybe he's listening now because I told him we were talking about the article. But I'd emailed him earlier to ask mm -hmm. him, why are you separated from law enforcement against prohibition? This right. is one of the things said in the vice.com article about him and his jail. Rick is the superintendent of the jail here in Cheshire County, and he's a was long known as a member of law enforcement against prohibition. He says he is not separated from law enforcement against prohibition. It's just a mistake that the vice.com uh, author made. Got so. It. That would, Correction. What a weird mistake. You know, I would think that would be such an important piece of information. Like, hey, this guy who runs a jail also happens to be against prohibition. That's kind of an important fact. Well, I'm glad that we. Well, he was still against prohibition in the yeah, article, yeah. but he was. Well, it was just said he was formally of law enforcement. Okay, I got it. I'm glad we got a ch chance to talk about it because the fact is, is that look, every news article has a mistake oh, in well, it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Every one of them. And this is one of the problems with doing a show like Free Talk Live is, is we're talking about imaginary situations, the ones that are in the imaginations of reporters, not in reality. Mm. Let's go to Nathan. He is in Texas and also on Skype. Hello, Nathan. Uh, hi, Ian. Hi, Mark. Hi, Derek. Hey. Um, Mark's comment in the last segment brought to mind something I've been wondering a while. What is the sociological kind of breakdown that happens in prisons? Do people, like, uh, do they segregate by uh, cell block or, or do they form clubs or groups or uh, how does that work? I know I saw a documentary about a California prison and there was a pretty heavy emphasis on race. Like, uh, they kind of implied that it was all kind of gang and race-based segregation. Um, so I can only speak for my experience. Um, I've heard that's very pronounced in California compared to some other places. Right. And California also has, uh, gangs that are an issue too. So mm -hmm. there's uh, race and gangs and, um, you know, gangs tend to break along racial lines to some extent, but, um, there's, there's allies and, and these kind of things. Nothing like that in Florida. What mostly was the case in Florida was, is you'd, um, in the Florida prison that I was at in the time that I was there, basically in the nineties is you had, uh sort of racial segregation so like the cubans kind of hang hung with the cubans the mexicans hang, hang with the mexicans the white kids would hang with the white guys um you know they might use terminology like the white pride organization um, well that's what they called themselves i'm not trying to the, the, this is florida you're talking about now this this is where i was in prison yep wow and um, would you have gotten into any heat for associating with people outside of your skin color not at all um, okay, so there's no firm ground rules. It's there. not firm in that way at all. But there's there's sort of, you know, who do you like and who do you not? And oftentimes, uh, blacks, which make up the largest percentage of the population in prison, and the prison I was at, they would break out based on um, geographic areas. So there'd be like the Miami guys, the Fort oh, really? Lauderdale guys, the Tampa guys, the huh. Sarasota guys, the Bradenton <laughs> guys. Right? They would, you know, be these Jacksonville and Old I wonder Town. why, because they're, they're all in the same place now. So it's not like they can have any sort of pride about like where they go hang out. I mean, they're all yeah, hanging out in general population. People's pride in where they're from is a very strong thing. I mean, look uh -huh. at the sports team mentality. Well, That's what I noticed thing. is oftentimes you would find people um, that actually knew each other there. Uh, okay. I met, um, you know, in the, in the course of uh, being in prison, I met very few people that I had met in real life. One guy I had, uh, you know, met one day at a medieval fair mm -hmm. for whatever reason was at the same prison that I was at. <laughs> um, my co-defendant at one point. Was, I was it the guy who pounds the nail into his skull? Not that I guy, love no. that guy. 
That sounds like a bad idea. <laughs> um, nonetheless, it was just uh, you know that's that's how how they broke out there. They broke out uh, in there were there was a gay click. Nathan, uh, where in Cheshire I, County? Yeah, when I sat down for the first time for lunch, I remember looking around and trying to find my clan. Like, where am I going to sit? Where, mm. where's this? How's this going to shake out? And it just so happened, and I don't think it was totally coincidence, that I sat with like five other gays. And wow. we, we all had the, the table, and it crossed barriers of uh, age and skin color because there were, you know, like a Puerto Rican guy who was like about 20, and there was a, an older guy, maybe in his 60s, you know, a white guy. But it was like the gays found each other. We, we, I don't know how. <laughs> was it like the doilies underneath the tray? <laughs> I don't know what it was. Was everybody just fabulous? I, no. They, there's, we were all wearing the same outfit, so there's nothing, <laughs> there's nothing that you, can distinguish. How did you wear it? That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, everybody's wearing the same outfit, but, but who wore yeah, it? You know what I, I mean? I hiked my uh, my. Well, I, yeah. So, but no, that they they uh, break up into sexuality as well, Nathan. Hmm. Well, that's interesting, and a kind of a follow up. Uh, and this is not necessarily just for Mark, but you can answer too, Derek and Ian. Did you notice any kind of, I guess, hierarchy for one of a better term? Uh, I mean, like uh, prisoners who were kind of recruited by the prison staff to kind of, you know, keep other prisoners in line in return for special favors, like those kind of people. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, that there were attempts were made at that with me, um, and the, there's no doubt that I got better treatment than most inmates uh, got. But there was a, you were working at the canteen. I was working at the staff canteen. I served them their coffee. Yeah. I assume they didn't want it spit in, so they treated me reasonably well. Um, I never, never. Spat in their cup. Never would have done such a thing because okay. I, I I took my my role, any role, any seriously. job I take, I take yeah. it seriously, and I am going to do it the best I could. Um, and obviously, there's nothing they could do to me now, so I tell you otherwise. Yeah. But they, um, one officer, they he, some inmate had snitched on him to the you know higher authorities or whatever, and he wanted them beaten up, so he uh, asked me to beat him up for oh, him. Wow. Like, and he basically said that he would be on duty that night and wanted me to do it. And I'm like, I, 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 yeah, is, this, no. is this a guard asking you to do this? Yeah, he did. Okay. It's fortunate think- he didn't retaliate on you for not doing it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he I was, could have done that. Indeed. It yeah, was scary. It was, it was ter- actually, terrifying. Go ahead, Nathan. I've actually seen this in a, on like a, on shows about prison. And I always wondered, was that a real thing or was that just something for TV? Oh, it's real. Consider I was in prison eight and a half years. It didn't happen very often that they, you know, did such a thing, but yeah, it didn't happen very often there. But remember we talked, I don't know if you heard that night, Mark, but we talked about Nadezhda Tolokonikova from uh, mm-hmm. the, the folks uh, spacing on their name right now. The girls from Russia. Pussy Riot. Pussy Riot. Thank you. Uh, and how her sentence over in Siberia, in the Siberian prison, was absolutely hellacious. And it was a regular occurrence that the uh, the guards would utilize the prisoners to enforce on other prisoners. So the guards themselves wouldn't have to get their hands dirty and they could administer beatings, essentially, through that, uh, that method. Thanks for the call, Nathan. Appreciate hearing from you tonight. 855-450-FREE. That's 855 855- Four five zero three seven three three. You can share your thoughts here on Free Talk Live and take control of the airwaves. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact in helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top one percent arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com 
Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. For the realists, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Do you love coffee as much as I love coffee? Here's a delicious way to drink the best of the best coffee and make a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox Coffee. And you can try a pound for free. All you do is cover shipping. It's organic, shade-grown, top 1% Arabica grade. 10% of future purchases help our efforts to give the gift of human freedom through at least 100 microloans via World Vision. For more information, go to coffee.freetalklive.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything you want toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. If we get a chance, we'll talk more about seasteading. What is it? Maybe you're new to the term. It's back in the news. We'll share a little bit about that with you here. And with you in the studio tonight, it is Ian. Derek J. And Mark. And, of course, you can join us on Skype as well. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. And, Mark, tell me how I can get a free pound of coffee. You can go to coffee.freetalklive.com. There, we are giving away a free pound. You pay for the shipping, but we'll send you a pound. You sign up for the subscription there at coffee.freetalklive.com. The coffee is delicious. It's 100% organic, top 1% grade Arabica um, beans. And, you know, you really need to try it. Just try this coffee. If you're buying normal store-bought coffee that's been, you know, likely beans are sitting around wet, getting moldy and all kinds of different things. You don't know where it's grown. You don't know if they have lead in uh, the gas there, if it's getting in the soil, if they're using, what kind of pesticides they're using. You have no clue. Try this coffee. If you like it, and you want to continue with it, there's a real bonus. And the bonus is sort of uh, sociological. BuzzBox, the company that uh, makes this coffee, allows Free Talk Live and other partners to offer microloans to people around the world. So for every 10 people that sign up to get their coffee through the subscription there at coffee.freetalklive.com, they can cancel at any time. You can cancel at any time. There, they make it so that we can, every 10 people, we're able to give a microloan. Uh, we recently posted on uh, our Facebook page, uh, somebody we helped, they've got bought a sewing machine to make shoes 
for the people in their village. Now, this is huge. They're going to be able to make a better living. Their families, uh, you know, getting a hand up instead of a handout. I think this is how we change the world. And you can do it one cup of coffee at a time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. We're sharing a story from Vice. It's a feature piece. I mean, it's fairly uh, fairly lengthy about they They titled it, This Warden Wants to Make His Job Obsolete. That's a little bit of hyperbole. He doesn't want to lose his job, obviously. But at the same time, uh, the, the guy who runs the local jail here in the Keene area, the Keene Spiritual Retreat, a.k.a. the House of Corrections, is a different kind of a, an animal for a jail warden. He brings a level of humanity to an inhumane task that I think is uh, is unprecedented amongst jail wardens and runs things very differently in comparison to other jails. And we're kind of sharing some of the observations that, that he makes and that the author of the Vice.com piece makes as well. So there, uh, he's being taken on a tour of this jail, and uh, while in the control room, he uh, the warden points to the room of cells in the maximum security block. All of these people are on lockdown 23 hours a day. You Ugh. only get one hour out in which to shower or make a phone call or clean your cell. Now, that's not what they would have called maximum security where I've been in. What would yours have been called? Would it, that would be segregation. That would be confinement. That would be um, solitary in some cases. Yeah. Um, segregation, conf- uh, segregation and confinement doesn't necessarily mean solitary. I think is, they're playing with the language here a little bit because that's what they called it when we when we were in the jail too. Yeah, it's uh, S block. So yeah, it they call it for segregation. segregation. Or yeah, one or the other. Uh, you only get one hour and uh, one hour per day. Inmates are here for discipline reasons. Now the standards say that you can be in here for an indefinite period of time, but I've limited that to 15 days. We are trying to create a system where everybody always has an opportunity to see the end. We are trying to say, as correctional agents, every day is an opportunity for you to decide to do things differently. And when you make that decision, we will be here to support you. Hold it. It's not just discipline stuff, because if you refuse to work as a slave for the jail, then, <laughs> you then you'll be, be thrown in segregation. Uh, that's, a dis- that's discipline. Well, refusing to perform labor for no pay, uh, uh, how could a person be disciplined for that? Welcome that's to n- the system. You can discipline people for anything. That doesn't make it legitimate. Okay. Like I said, it, I mean, it's it's still just the best uh, <sighs> jail out there. There's still some bad aspects to it's it. It's just weird, because it's so good. Like, he, he makes this jail so such a resort that it makes me wonder, like, you know, well, why be so inhuman? Are you going to punish these people or, or not? Are you going to be evil and, and just be what it is, a jail? Or are you going to make it nice and just, you know, well, if you're going to make it nice, why not just treat people nicely and not put them in a jail is, is basically where I'm coming from. Well, like, he actually gets to that here in a little bit, too. With the, all right, uh, all right. With, I won't jump the with gun. The, with, I don't, the, with the program where, uh, what is it called, tracking or GPS? There's like a, a, oh, there's a program where you can. That doesn't sound good at all. Where you can get out of the facility. Oh. Derek. It's jail. Oh, here. come on. <laughs> well, now it does sound good, actually. If you can spend time at your home and at your job rather than in the jail, that's that's pretty good. The, but then the there problem are more is the of reason... those. Th- then they give those out like candy, and they're like, yep. oh, yeah, well, we don't have to spend all this money on jailing people anymore, so everyone gets a bracelet. Right. Now we're going to track everyone. And, well, they, they just started out with the people who go to jail and the people who have uh, crimes charged against them by the state, but then it's for everybody. At I don't disagree with that at all, but the problem is what they send people to jail for and what they incarcerate for and what people they, they, they put little anklets on for. It doesn't have to do with um, you know, the, the superintendent. He's stuck in many ways. Okay, that's fair. Well, he, I think, gets to decide uh, what level of release a an inmate is going to have. So if somebody is seeming, you know, seems like they're not a danger or whatever, they're not going to run, you can let them out and they can go to their job and they can go to work during the daytime, for instance, and or be out of the facility entirely and on mm-hmm. one of these ankle bracelets, mm-hmm. which, of course, you know, the negative sides of that is obviously the tracking aspect and, you know, you're still under their control and you have to pay for, you have to pay them for the privilege of being out but at the same time you aren't forced to work for the jail if it's, you're out working your own job it would be unique if it's up to the superintendent in a lot of cases it's up to the judge good point maybe the superintendent presents the option to the judge i think that's how it mm-hmm. works uh so going on here if with uh, vice.com and their feature piece are they allowed anything in the cell again we're talking about the solitary cells mm-hmm. uh they can have two books but no photographs no radio no tv nothing 15 days can be a very long time, said Van Wickler, and nobody ever stays longer than 15 days. There have been people who've done extended periods of time because their behavior is so violent you can't put them in the general population. Well, why are they so violent? 
I just think they're institutionalized, said Van Wickler. These are people who've spent their whole lives in prison, basically. They can't make it in society more than a month or two without ending back up in the system. These are angry people who don't have a lot to live for, and their entertainment is being feared in jail. They can't hail being a high school student graduate or being a good father, so being the toughest guy in the house is all they've got. And unfortunately, we disappoint them. I think he's mischaracterizing this because uh, people could spend longer than 15 days. And it's not just for, like he said earlier, disciplined behavior. Because if you're serving a fine, then that's served in segregation. That can't be served in general population. Wait a minute, what? All fines are served in segregation is what I was told when I was in the jail. That's why I decided to skip out and write a motion for um, being able to serve community service hours rather than serve the fine because initially i was going to serve the fine in jail and they said that has to be served in segregation really yes so it would have been more than 15 days and it would have been completely unrelated to discipline so rick van wickler is really trying to paint a good face on himself here and i have to say he's not being completely honest so uh there's one point that i'll quibble with you on about this and that is that van wickler in my understanding of his explanation of this in the past having talked to him about this Mm -hmm. Was that generally the 15 day window does apply. And the reason why he made that decision was because they want people to serve the fines in segregation so they'll cough up the money. That's the reason why they have that policy in the first place. It's because they know if they put somebody in segregation, all of a sudden, you know, the girlfriend's going to call up and say, okay, I've got the money. I'll yeah, if pay they, up. If they torture you, you get yes, money out of them. That's exactly what it is. 855 450 free. The toll free number here, again, it's jail. It's not perfect. And Van Wickler isn't, isn't a total saint, but he's better than a lot of these guys, I think. More coming up here in moments. You can take control. And he's definitely right on prohibition. We'll get to that coming up. It's Free Talk Live. Do you owe the IRS money that you can't pay? Are tax liens and levies ruining your life? Are you tired of being afraid just to go to the mailbox? If this describes you, then Dan Pilla can help. Hi, I'm Dan Pilla, and I've been solving tax problems for more than 30 years. In fact, I wrote the book that made it possible to negotiate settlements with the IRS, and I've helped thousands of people do exactly that. Call now at 800-346-6829 to learn how I can help you. You know your IRS debt will not go away by itself, but you don't have to live in fear anymore. New changes to IRS policies will help more people than ever before eliminate their debts once and for all. There's no need for you to suffer another day with IRS debt. Call 800-346-6829. I can help you eliminate wage and bank levies, release tax liens, and negotiate a settlement with the IRS that will put your tax nightmare behind you forever. Call 800-34-NO-TAX or go to my website, taxhelponline.com. That's taxhelponline.com. Hi, I'm Derek J. To me, an activist's calling is to actively work to advance a cause. The cause for which I work is personal freedom. I believe my life is best when I engage in voluntary interactions and self-government. I reject the idea that anyone else has a higher claim to my life or my body than I do. I see people who call themselves the government as a threat to my personal freedom. I realize you may feel differently, but my relationship with the people who call themselves the government is completely involuntary. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. 
But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. When you're coping with bad news and the news media come calling, and they will, don't clam up. As notorious political figures find out the hard way, the cover-up can be worse than the crime. So get out in front of unfavorable news about your company, your group, or organization, or yourself. The sooner you confront a negative story, the sooner it will be over. Responding as quickly to negative stories as you do to positive ones enhances your credibility. Hiding embarrassing information or lying will do more damage than damage control. Never stonewall. Tell your side of the story, use specifics, and detail what corrective action has already been taken. Respond in kind. If the issue is emotional, don't sound like a cold, unemotional Mr. Spock. For more tips on critical communication skills for the way things are now, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up whatever you want. Just dial toll-free to 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. Don't forget, you can join us online over at freetalklive.com. Need focus? Feeling fatigued? Trying to get that extra edge when it counts? There's just so much going on all at once in our lives these days. Every moment, it seems like we can't keep track of everything, and we're tired. Don't you wish there was something that could get you out of the rut, give you the focus you need, and help you get things done? Well, there may be. Modafinil from ModUp.net. Studies show one in five students use this cognitive enhancer, offering multiple benefits, including a double-digit increase in short-term memory, fighting off fatigue, and greater focus overall so you can get things done. Businessmen around the world continue to talk about how Modafinil from ModUp.net is making the difference in their work, giving them that critical edge that they need. Check out ModUp.net and look into it for yourself. They offer fast delivery worldwide for guaranteed high-quality Modafinil at an amazing price. And ModUp.net is a supporter of the Bitcoin community. That's right. You can order from ModUp.net with Bitcoin and get a 33% discount. And to make the deal even sweeter, use code FTL and you'll get 10 free tablets with your order. So again, use code FTL at ModUp.net. And remember, Free Talk Live is an international radio show and ModUp.net ships worldwide. It's your responsibility to know if local prescription requirements and laws apply. Please, we recommend you check it out yourself. ModUp.net offers great service at a great price. That's ModUp.net, code FTL, ModUp.net. All right, so our number toll-free, 855-453. We go back to the story from Vice.com about the Keen Spiritual Retreat, a.k.a. the county jail. Things are done a little bit differently at, uh, at the county jail here, and it's, it's described in this article as being progressive. Some would, you know, there's some quibbles that one could have about this jail. Like, you know, I don't like the fact that when you go to the outside area, you're actually, in point of fact, inside, and there's just two garage doors up real high that open up to let fresh air in. That doesn't really feel like outside to me, but apparently there's no requirement that prisoners be able to go outside, so they didn't allow that in this particular facility. So, I, you know, I may have my my quibbles about what I think could be different or better about the about the jail, and obviously not keeping peaceful prisoners there would be number one. Um, and Van Wickler is forced to keep people there that he would not like to keep there. He, um, you know, d whatever your opinion about his various different policies are, he definitely is against the war on drugs. And he knows that his facility is full of people who are there for drug convictions and awaiting trial for drugs. So, let me go on with the story here. He's talking about these institutionalized people that want to be the toughest guy in the jail. And he says, on our return from, or the article says, on our return from the cell blocks, Van Wickler paused to indulge in his favorite vice, smoking cigars. He led us through several rooms of loud geothermal heating machinery before opening a steel door in the wall. Suddenly, there was forest and sky and bird songs, and all of it extra vivid. I can feel my heart slowing down, and I took a deep breath. The warden gazed off as he smoked, casting his eyes to the distant hills. The future of corrections is out there, he insisted, not in here. 
He says, I would like to think that we're on the eve of the community corrections model, that people can serve their punishment in the community and not in an institution like this. Now, this goes back to something we were talking about earlier. The, the question that you had asked, Mark, and we haven't gotten an answer yet. I don't expect that we will, was what are some new methods of, of correcting or punishing or, you know. Well, you actually, you, you pointed out house arrest is um, relatively new, at least in its implementation. I mean, that's a big the, I don't know. If, uh, it seems like house arrest wasn't something that was terribly common 100 or 200 years ago. Okay, certain, so relatively new, yeah. Certainly some uh, rich people might have been confined to their quarters in the castle. But, uh, <laughs> you know, yeah. that's I'm just trying to come up with this, and it seems like house arrest might be something new. Now, it's been around for decades, but it really doesn't get used much because it doesn't pay in the way that a convict pays the state. It's when, true. When you put a convict in jail, you're uh, you're employing a prison prison guards and they're taking uh, up space, and yeah. there are certain things that have to be done. About There's that. a prison industrial complex, whereas which costs a great deal, and taxpayers just pony up the money, and they have to. Whereas um, 114 dollars per day at the Cheshire County uh, Spiritual. That's retreat. what the, uh, the the number is. So 36 uh, 36 uh, thousand a year, something um, like that. Yeah. The yeah, I mean, or maybe even forty. So, I mean, that's they're worth forty thousand dollars a year in jail. They actually just give like thirty dollars or maybe a hundred dollars a month to their probation officer when they've got the ankle thing on. So, they're the the numbers it's of more it, than that. Uh, it's actually ten dollars a day. $10. And I had heard it was twenty, so maybe it's come down over time, or that's a fact they got wrong in the, wow. in the story. Six hundred dollars a month. To have the ankle bracelet oh, on? Oh, yeah. They, the, the jail does pretty well when they let somebody out with the bracelet. So how does that compare, by the way, the $114 per day? Uh, it, he, Van Wickler says it's similar to other prisons. The average is ticking up toward 40000 per year, depending on the jurisdiction, said Van Wickler. One possible solution, he believes, is a GPS ankle tether program that his jail is currently operating. Eligible inmates, that means not everybody, uh, pays $10 a day to be enrolled in the program under which their movements are heavily restricted. That fee covers all costs associated with the program. The financial benefits are obvious, said Van Wickler. They feed and clothe themselves, and they pay for their own medical care, all while still being incapacitated. Corrections veteran Major Hank Colby oversees the Tether program. He spoke about the most common question he receives from the public. People always ask, well, can't they just cut this off and then go kill somebody? I always say, absolutely, but the idea is to not put someone on the program that's at risk for doing that. That's where classification comes in. Yeah, and that's true, but at some point or another, you're going to slip up. At some point or another, somebody's just going to do something bananas. You know, the fact is... is and then that the whole program will be called into question. It happens all the time. Yeah. I'm sorry to tell you, but... It doesn't matter how many people's lives have benefited from the program that, you know, you could right. be on the outside of a jail rather on the inside. Somebody's girlfriend's going to ch uh, cheat on them or whatever while they're on this mm. program. They're, it's going to be a crime of passion and... No, this program isn't going anywhere because it's a money maker for the prison industrial complex. That's a good whereas point. before they were spending money on prisoners, now they're making money. Wait a second. Um, who's who makes them? Who the the jail makes more money from a prisoner than they make from this program? If it's ten dollars a day, that's uh, what three hundred dollars a month. Um, they were talking about one hundred and fourteen dollars a day. That it costs to incarcerate yeah, somebody. But they, may not. they don't care who pays. Taxpayers pay. They don't care who pays just how much money Hold they get. Hold on, though. Van Wickler puts in for a full budget every year. So he puts in, as I understand it, he puts in to have that, like as far as getting his budget every year, he puts in as though his jail's full. Okay. So I don't think it matters at the Cheshire County House of Corrections whether you're sitting in that cell or not. All right. I think they're pulling in the same amount of money regardless. Now, maybe on the next year, when he goes back for the next budget, if the numbers show that he didn't fill the jail at all during the year, maybe then the county commissioners will say, well, you can't have a full budget. But from what I recall from previous articles about Van Wickler, he's getting a full budget as though the jail is fully, uh, well, the, fully st staffed. The way I look at it, there's an organization sta uh, charged with the job of correction, and they're the ones who are spending money putting prisoners in these cages or uh, receiving money for prisoners who are on the outs. So... They're making money with the the bracelet one because the prisoners have to pay for it. And the 
rest comes from taxpayers. And it gives them more room to lock other people up inside the jail. Yeah, right. But, so but they're more happy money to this spend way. taxpayers' money. Um, yeah, but I mean, so, I, okay, that's a good, good point. They don't work true, like a but normal business. But if they're would. getting the same amount of money, if there's 200, if there's 230 bed facility, if 200 of the beds are full, most on average throughout the year, and I don't know what the average number is, but whenever I was in there, it was at least 180 to 210 or something like that. It's pretty full. So it's mostly full. If this thing's got 200 people in it most every day of the year, and they're getting the same amount of money for that 200 people as they would have if they had 230 people in there, then it definitely benefits the jail to let people out where they then pay $300 a month for the privilege of being on the outside. Yeah, this is why I fear that more of these bracelets will be handed out for smaller and smaller crimes. You know, oh, you, you drove without uh, your license. Now you need to have one of these bracelets because yep. they're cheap and they make money for the jails. We'll come back with more here. You can share your thoughts. 855 450 free. What is the alternative? What are some new ideas as far as corrections? I don't even like that word. I don't know what better word to use uh, as far as changing people's behavior from destructive to not so destructive. 855 450 free. You can take control here in the remaining moments of Free Talk Live, which are coming up next. What if you could combine the two most powerful diet ingredients into one incredible weight loss super pill? We've done just that. For the first time ever, the miracle fat burner in a bottle, Raspberry Ketone, has been combined with pure Garcinia Cambogia, described as the holy grail of weight loss, to bring you the world's most powerful diet pill. Get your phone ready, because we're releasing free bottles to the first 100 callers. But wait, we haven't just combined the two most powerful weight loss ingredients. We've combined the six most powerful ingredients. Green coffee bean, African mango, moringa, and glucomonin. All the hottest clinically proven weight loss ingredients combined into one fat-shedding super pill. We call it the Skinny Six Super Supplement, and it's available for the very first time. Be one of the first 100 callers and we'll rush you a free bottle. Call 1-800-514-2945. Find out how to get your free bottle. 1-800-514-2945. 1-800-514-2945. Gentlemen, in search of a million-dollar smile that'll make them take notice, I mean really get their attention, then get the mud. My Magic Mud. The fluoride-free whitener with no chemicals, additives, GMOs, or bad taste. And safe to swallow. My Magic Mud detoxifies, reduces sensitivity, cleans and strengthens your teeth while it whitens. Comes as a powder for pure whitening power. Start looking good for that special someone. Get the mud now. MyMagicMud.com It's already too late. Criminals have kicked in your door and are now in your home. Before this happens, homeowners have a choice. One, do nothing and hope you aren't one of the 1.4 million families attacked each year. Or two, refuse to be a victim and for as low as $59, reinforce your doors with door devils. Door devils simply attach to existing door frames and have proven to stop the biggest bad guys from kicking in doors. Read our police testimonials of real-life events at doordevil.com. Alarms don't stop kick-ins. We do. Doordevil.com. Free Talk Live. Some old codger Republican is screaming at his radio. This is not a democracy. Yeah, We're a Republican, Republican democracy. We live in a republic. And <laughs> to that guy, I, I, just take a take take a deep breath. Tell me the operative difference between a democracy and a republic. Well, we elect representatives in a republic. That's true. And you respect a, rights. A direct democracy certainly is a democracy where everybody gets a, a, a vote. But tell me about this respecting rights thing. What other republic, in fact, respects rights? The People's Republic of China. Right. So this idea that we live in a republic is really just fallacious. It's just some term that someone's come up with. In Greek, democracy means of the people. Republic in Latin means for the people or, or something. Don't These, forget the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. That's right. a republic. Right. There's another <laughs> Republic. I mean, republics are all over. Take a pill. Republic means nothing. <laughs> Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. 
Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Moments remain here. Enough time for your thoughts at 855-450 free or Skype into the show at username lrn.fm. Uh, don't forget you can join us online over at freetalklive.com. Blockchain.info, it's the best online wallet that you can get. Um, it has encryption right in the browser, so they never actually possess your Bitcoins. You do. You're able to access it through your um, smartphone or your laptop or wherever. That's what I think is so awesome about the Blockchain.info app. It's completely free. If there's any terms of service over there, go check it out. Uh, by the way, you can get it on uh, Android, and as I understand it, uh, obviously you can use an iPhone through your browser, but as I understand it, uh, Derek, that there might be the ability that, to... Breaking that, news. That may be happening soon. Yes, there is a story uh, that's circulating about Apple uh, changing its guidelines for app developers, hmm. and they will now allow for Bitcoin apps. So I look. Maybe forward they felt the burn of uh, people selling their iPhones and or destroying them, uh, physically mutilating them after uh, Apple removed the blockchain.info app from their store a few months back. I certainly hope that they're responding to uh, the needs and wants of their consumers who love Bitcoin and would love to use it. Uh, and we're using it quite successfully on Apple platforms. Until... If Apple were smart, they'd take Bitcoin. Right, yeah. So th I, hopefully it's all just uh, going to happen soon. And uh, I'm glad. Congratulations, Apple, for changing your guidelines Uh I want to use Bitcoin. Let's go to the Blockchain.info. Your calls and thoughts are welcome. We've been talking about jail and incarceration, corrections, as it's called, throughout the night tonight. Isaac in West Virginia, listening to WVTS. You're on the air. Hi. Glad to be here. Welcome. Go ahead, sir. Um, love your show. Just add that. Uh, Thanks. I have two things that I was going to say. The first thing is I think that uh, we have a very over-criminalized penal system. I mean, I think it's ridiculous. Like, take, for example, some teenager sends an explicit photo of themselves to someone else, that's the only distribution of child pornography. Yeah. With all the terrible things that go along with that. But the second thing I was going to mention was just that you were talking about uh, things that would uh, better correction type systems. Sure. And I mean, I, I've worked with a lot of felons and they all talk about the stuff they got away with and how it wasn't too bad in there. And I was just thinking that work crews, I know I've known some people that have had experience with that, and they've came out really well afterward. And so a work crew, over meaning like going out and doing the slave labor for the for the county. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they they can build a skill. I mean, I, I do road construction during the summers between college, and uh, I work with people who have uh, built built skills that have allowed them to get uh, jobs that, that pay over minimum wage and. Uh, after they get out of prison. Well, that's awesome. Yeah, I wouldn't say h shoveling horse manure would be a skill that it was particularly <laughs> valuable, so I guess there's a range of options as far as the work you can do in a jail. Usually, if you're shoveling horse manure, you have other uh, you know, <laughs> other jobs uh, involved. Rare, rare is the person whose sole task is horse manure shoveling. Well, there were people whose job it was was to go down and take care of the stables at the uh, the Cheshire County Fairgrounds. It was one of their jobs at the jail. Yep. And I imagine that's mostly shoveling poo. I th I honestly think that uh, your your wages uh, depend uh, largely on your attitude, um, your willingness to learn, and you don't your get wages in jail, Mark. In prison, you can actually get money, but in jail, I'm talking about when you get out. If, oh, you have a, I see. if you're a convict and you get out and you think the world sucks and you think that somebody owes you something, it's I got attitude. news for you. Yeah. It's going to suck and nobody's going to yep. feel like they owe you anything. That's certainly true. Isaac, thanks for calling tonight. Appreciate it. Let's go to Tom in Maryland. You're on Free Talk Live. Tom. 
Hey, good evening, gentlemen. Go ahead. This is a real interesting conversation. Great. As far as alternatives, I would venture to take a stab at that and guess that it probably, a good alternative probably lies both for the penalizing of people who commit crimes and for the reform of the system in incentives and disincentives. Now, I don't think the last guy had a bad idea as far as putting people to work, but I don't think it should be something that is necessarily mandatory, nor do I think they should be paid a a pittance while they're doing it. I think if you, again, getting back to the incentives and disincentives, I think if you give them an incentive to want to go ahead and work on the highways for a decent wage, it would solve the problem of them leaving there with 10, 20 bucks in their pocket. Uh, It would get them into what's been proven to be beneficial, a habit of doing uh, work uh, and seeing what type of money they can accrue uh, by saving it, because of course they're not going to be able to blow it in a weekend while they're behind bars Mm -hmm. at the end of the day. And I think also you have to always, and I think your warden or superintendent up there has it right, I think you really can never lose sight of the fact that these are human beings and you have to respect them. And respect usually begets respect. And I think once you start looking at them as something other than being human beings, uh, you disempower them. When you don't have options, uh, you disempower them. And I think any time that you use disempowerment, and removal of personal responsibility and accountability, I don't think it ever works as well as empowering an individual and placing in their hands the responsibility and accountability for their actions, including penance and restoration if it's needed, and self-reform, self-correction, if you will. Well, I'd um, also say that it, um, another incentive that it removes, and this is a good incentive to remove, is, is that they've shown uh, in the past, like for instance in uh, some of the southern states, that convictions would go up around harvest time because, well, we need more inmates to do the harvesting. And so they would, uh, you know, they'd, the judges would be like, oh yeah, let's convict some more people. And then, of course, they'd let them out after the harvest is, uh, is done. So y- when you have situations where inmates are paid less than market wages— and they're not able to uh, just opt out of the work. You have a situation where they're you know, they're being used as uh, slave labor, prison labor, and that incentivizes the system to keep them. If you have somebody who's and working, add more. right? If you have somebody who's working for you for less than market wages, do you want to keep them or do you want to see them get out and do well? Which is one of the reasons why I have well, this big uh, prison industrial complex. They keep arresting people for drugs and then they can turn them into slave labor. Thanks, Tom, for the call tonight. I appreciate hearing from you. So there's actually quite a bit more uh, to this, several paragraphs more on this Vice story. We're not going to get through it all, so you can look at it on your own time. But there's one more, at least one more statement here from Rick Van Wickler, the, uh, the warden of the, the jail in this case, I think is really worth sharing. So let me get to that here. As one of the groups that could benefit most, Van Wickler believes, is nonviolent drug offenders. As a member of law uh, law enforcement against prohibition, the warden is adamantly against the drug war. He explains, I've seen people come into this institution for drug violations. I've seen the cost not only to the taxpayer, but the social costs, the cost of parents being away from their children. Contrary to what a lot of media has portrayed and what law enforcement believes, not every person in jail for drug possession is a bad parent. The author of the article asks, why do you think that's such a common opinion? He says, I think they believe what they see on television, that you take a hit off a joint and the next thing you know, you're on the bathroom floor with a needle in your arm. What the American public just cannot seem to understand is how much drug use there is in our country. Question from the author, how do you think they can be made to understand? Well, let's think about alcohol for a moment. The majority of people who drink alcohol in this country have no problems with it. They're alcohol users. They drink on the 4th of July and barbecues and at the Super Bowl. Then think about somebody who's an abuser of alcohol, meaning that they use alcohol much more than they should. But they're still working. They still have a house. They're still in a relationship. Finally, think about an alcohol addict, an alcoholic. Their lives have been destroyed by alcohol. 
Now, you can have the exact or you can take the exact same analogy and just replace alcohol with drugs, heroin, cocaine, meth. You have users, abusers, and addicts in pretty much the same ratios. Let's not be so damn naive and say that we in America don't have professional people that are addicts because we all know that's not accurate. We have professional people who are heroin addicts, who have been heroin addicts for years and are meeting the standards of their employment. That's happening, and to deny it is an atrocity. I agree. It's hard not to agree, right? What a strong statement. Yeah. That's why I love Rick Van Wickler. I mean, he he says what needs to be said from a position of, you know, we don't believe in authority, but other people do. He says it from this position of guy running the jail. Guy who would like to release 40% of his prisoners, but if he did that, the judge would put him in the jail. So he's not willing to put his own butt on the line to just set a group of prisoners free. He'd but never he, be able to treat any other any of them well after that. He is willing to put his reputation on the line and speak out in favor of ending the war on drugs. And uh, for that and for being a relatively, relatively humane uh, person operating a uh, correctional facility, he deserves kudos. And so way to go, Rick. More coming up here tomorrow night online in the meantime. FreeTalkLive.com. This is... We know you're out there. We can feel you now. We know that you're afraid. You're afraid of us. You're afraid of change. We don't know the future. We aren't here to tell you how this is going to end. We're here to tell you how it's going to begin. We're going back to editing the next edition of Freedom's Phoenix Digital Magazine now, where we are telling the people what you don't want them to know. We're showing them a world without you, a world without rules and controls, without borders or boundaries, a world where anything is possible. Where we go from there is a choice we leave to you. Subscribe at freedomsphoenixeasy.com. That's freedoms with an S, phoenixeasy.com. There's a treasure hunt going on at mathgate.info, a Bitcoin treasure hunt. You can find Bitcoins by proving theorems. So learn some logic, do some math, find some Bitcoins. Even better, mathgate.info is designed to be used anonymously. So connect to mathgate.info through Tor, prove some theorems, find some anonymous Bitcoins. Don't wait. Others are already searching for the Bitcoins. Go to mathgate.info today and join the treasure hunt. There are anonymous Bitcoins to be had for the taking at mathgate.info. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. The live edition of Liberty Conspiracy is next, after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. Radio VR. Good morning and welcome to Radio VR. We're broadcasting live from Washington, D.C. and around the world on voiceofrussia.com slash U.S. I'm Kate Zickel. And I'm Rick Young. Today is Monday, June 2nd, 2014. Radio VR News. President Obama is moving ahead with dramatic and controversial plans to curb emissions from coal-fired power plants. White House correspondent Mark Smith reports on the president's latest attack on global warming. It's the latest front in the president's bid to limit the gases tied to global warming. Changes we're seeing in our climate means that Uh, Unfortunately, uh, storms like Sandy could end up being more common. His warning came visiting FEMA as this year's hurricane season began and as he taped his weekly media address at Children's Hospital to highlight health problems caused by belching smokestacks. But Obama's leaving it to EPA Chief Gina McCarthy to make today's announcement. The White House denies it's because Republicans are girding to make coal state Democrats pay for these rules at the polls. Mark Smith at the White House. Opponents of the president's plan to slash emissions at coal-fired power plants warn it would exact a huge price. Jerry Bonelander has the reaction. The U.S. Chamber of Commerce warns the proposal will raise electricity prices and shut down power plants across the country. 
and it frightens Congressman Nick Rahal of West Virginia, where coal is a key part of the economy. It will be very bad for jobs. The only real question is where, on a scale from devastating to a death blow, the new rule will fall. Republicans will likely criticize the president for using his executive authority because he wouldn't be able to win congressional approval for the plan. Jerry Bodlander, Capitol Hill. Emotions run high as family and friends welcome the news that Army Sergeant Bo Bergdahl has been released from Taliban captivity. Correspondent Diane Kepley reports on the former captured soldier's family. A hometown celebration as the family and friends of Army Sergeant Bo Bergdahl cheer his release by the Taliban. You are free. Freedom is yours. I will see you soon, my beloved son. I love you, Bo. And his mother says she wants nothing more than to hold her son again. But Bo's father admits his son still has a long recovery ahead of him. Bo has been gone so long. Um that it's going to be very difficult to come back. Bob Bergdahl says he is proud of his son's perseverance and courage and praised his son for how far he was willing to go to help the Afghan people. I'm Diane Kepley. Some members of Congress continue to criticize the White House for the deal that won the release of captured soldier Bo Bergdahl. They also say the release of five Guantanamo detainees could compromise the security of the United States. Jackie Quinn has the details. Some, like Texas Republican Senator Ted Cruz, are criticizing the prisoner exchange. Have we just put a price on other U.S. soldiers? What does this tell terrorists? And some are outraged the decision was made without the required 30 days congressional notification. But National Security Advisor Susan Rice says Bo Bergdahl's health and safety were in jeopardy. We did not have 30 days to wait, and had we waited and lost him, uh, I don't think anybody would have forgiven uh, the United States government. She says over the years there were extensive consultations with lawmakers. Both Rice and Cruz appeared on ABC's This Week. Jackie Quinn, Washington. <laughs> New York Senator Charles Schumer is proposing a new federal database to provide children's organizations with access to the criminal background reports of adults seeking to work with kids. Julie Walker explains how the system might work. Schumer's proposed legislation follows recent child pornography charges against 71 people in the New York area, including a Boy Scout leader and a Little League coach. The critical information that's being withheld would allow a sexual predator, a sexual offender, to work with children. That's a terrifying thought. Schumer says right now the only way organizations that work with children can find out about prospective employees is through private background checks that are less thorough than the FBI's. Julie Walker, New York. In health news, an expensive drug has been found to help some men with prostate cancer. Tim McGuire with the details. A study finds that docetaxel, a chemotherapy drug that's been around for decades, extended life by more than a year when added to stem.